before we like narratively get started, um, let's do some bullet points of things that have happened in the last sessions, just to make sure everyone's like caught up, caught up, out of character. Peaceful. Um. Hmm. Name all the stuff you guys remember. From last session? Mm, last we just, I was going to start with a big bang, but okay. The last thing I remember was we were still hanging out in the tower, and as and Ishtalan were going to do some magic and make something happen. And that's the last thing I know about out of character. Um, I mm. do know that that didn't work, and you guys... Uh, yeah, it did. They brought Salinger back. Yeah, I know about that, and that's about all. I and then now we're back at the town, and it's n not Christmas. Mm. That's about all I know. Uh, let's do... Let's recap from when you guys, like, left Alenga's guess best the first time. Let's just do the whole tower, just a brief recap. Because I don't think it's actually that many plot points. Um, I mean, in order of operations, we got to the tower. A handful of characters saw uh, ghosts of other Esmonds. Uh, we made our way into the basement of the tower. Um... There was a device that had a series of recordings from the previous owner of the tower, Desmond, who uh, was performing some kind of uh, studies over the course of hundreds of years uh, regarding what we are currently dealing with now with uh, reality falling apart. Um, Esmond is <sighs> I, the latest... Uh, what he understands to be the latest iteration um, in those Desmonds. Uh, there was... Oh, Christ. Um, <laughs> uh, um, I can... I can pick up, pick up, pick up. Yeah, so in that laboratory they found a variety of devices um, that had been built um by whoever, you know, the people who came before, the ver versions of Esmond slash Desmond who had been there in the past. Um, going through those devices, some really important information was found. Um, one of them, one of the devices had recordings that seemed to be like, essentially like journal entries, like video journal entries, but kind of like crystal hologram kind of stuff, right? And what they found out was that those recordings like were sort of like separate from time. You could record them in the future and then view them in the past or vice versa all kinds of interesting stuff right so through watching these recordings they realize there's been many 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 iterations sort of of this experiment this desmond desmond sort of experiment and um they um what's the word? they continue it by essentially like learning from each other right um in this weird sort of time loop kind of thing that doesn't i don't think it physically makes sense in reality but the idea is you get to experience you get to experience all these different iterations that would really just happen instantaneously like you get to like like they're all kind of spread out throughout time um through these recordings um there what you find out was that the cycle gets broken because um a person who would be a stranger to all of you a figure in like black with a big uh, a big wide brim hat and a long plague doctor mask, like much longer than Ava's, shows up and kills a version of Esmond. Um, and at the at the end of the recording, implies somehow that Salinger's activities in the past made this place, made them privy to this where and when they would find this tower. And so they showed up and killed Esmond. Um, Something about the morel journals, yes. Um, when that happens, presumably that's when Gwen and Mulgwood escape with baby Esmond. And that's the Esmond who grew up in Shepherd's End. And that's who you know. Um, there was also a cache of like treasure and devices found under the tower, like some magic weapons and stuff like that. And 
an airship drive core, um, which when combined with some other useful things, could potentially uh, make an airship. There was also a device that allowed for communication that was also sort of separate from time. And what you find out was that versions of Esmond had been talking to Sad in Northgate and that they learned about the White Tower in the past and what would happen um, from those conversations. Um, and felt that there was some urgency to limited time frame. Like they had this little window of 20 years to relive this cycle over and over again to try to solve the problem, but they never quite solved it. In addition to that, there was like a complex signal that had been like a a, a signal, like a pattern in time that had been captured inside of one of these devices and they had never been able to quite decode it, but your husband figured it out finally, um, based on all the work that had been done before and his own intuitions, how to solve it. And what was inside when they decoded the pattern was Salinger. Um, there was a hidden room that had um, essentially, like, think of it like a Star Trek transporter device. And um, also in the room was um, like mm, in jars, like uh, organic material. Uh, Esmond figured out he could use the device to potentially. Um, has the the Ishalan Shaladi thing did that go public with everyone, or is that still private information? Still private with potentially. Ava knowing about it. Okay, there was some sort of fiasco with that device where it caught on fire, and, and Ava's mad at, at Esmond. That's what you know. Um, they found out that in those jars was ver like a failed attempts to, like um, failed attempts to, essentially kidnap child Esmonds through time. And that, and th I think through those notes, you would figured out that in order to have an assistant and progress the work, which was more important to Desmond than anything else, he was kidnapping versions of himself from different from different points on his timeline, um, in order to like make the work be more efficient, faster, start younger, get the yeah, stuff like that. Um, let's see. I'm not sure if there were any other major events, unless I'm missing something that is... I mean, outside of Esmond explaining, like, the making um, of the universe. Yeah, yeah, that's probably a good thing. So, we... Esmond went through all the research, and there was a big conversation between him, and they brought up, uh, like, Araya brought up stories of religion, and Kabeth had story about the the creature from the, the children's book and the short of all of that was that there there's a, th a theory we'll, we'll call it Desmond's theory that um, the natural state of the universe is like it's chaos and paradox and things don't make sense and then in ancient times the gods laid out all the moments in a chronological way that could be experienced by mortals and something that's going on with the tower is dis is potentially damaging that separation between paradox and reality and chronomantic magic and things that are really disruptive can essentially tear the weave and allow paradox into reality and that's maybe why things like Weird things that can't happen are happening, right? People vanishing and that stuff like that. Or like, you know, paradoxical situations existing and happening uh, because that's actually the natural state of existence. Um, yeah, so then you guys buried the the jars and stuff like that and did like a little nice little funeral and then left the tower. Um, I think... Th We'll say the the big big objective right now is to figure out what's going on in some relationship between the White Tower and then some magical device that's in the capital, 
of your of your kingdom because um, they are having an influence on each other and creating terrible situations and um, short term and some shorter term goals the attempts to get Shalati back it seems like the best option right now is to find a find a tear that leads to another reality and Esben now has the ability to use those tears to go to the place between instead of where they usually go to. Um, and the nearest one that you know about um, would either be um, the one by Shepherd's End, the one you very first found, or the one at the uh, the one at the temple. And we talked about going back to either of those because we could then maybe help Araya rescue her folks as well. Correct. I have uh, two questions for Chris. Um, the first one is, since I haven't been here for two sessions, did Kabeth pop out of existence or have I been around? That affects and, me planning. Um, you've been popped out of existence. The, I, whenever a player is not here, their character is always. Okay. And what is the in-character knowledge for how Sal has returned? Um, it would be the same. So the way that I sort of handle it is, so your character experiences sort of this, you would have like dreamlike memories of having actually been there, right? Because you, you lived through some version of that, right? But you would just remember it kind of dreamlike. It's just for the main story that we follow, you weren't there and you might have some slightly different version of it. If that makes sense. Okay. I'm just trying to figure out how Kabeth handles seeing him having not been directly around for that okay so i have like a dreamlike memory of and and and, and, and i give you kind was, of leeway. sorry and then what was the reason given to the group for his return like what like why do we think he's back yeah we haven't so, really had a chance to talk to sean about it actually sal still hasn't really gotten a well, chance in game to... that's that's really an esmond answer right so from esmond's perspective of that problem and salinger might have a different answer but the Esmond presented answer is that um, a reflection of Salinger had been captured by Desmond um, in that magic device. So when when Salinger tumbled through time, uh, a, 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 a reflection of that event was captured by Desmond. Now, Salinger's story may be different, but that's the Esmond's. Okay. All right. Just trying to sort out my character knowledge. Thank you. He does say the last thing he remembered was asking Gish to dance. Yeah, and even even Peach and Sal haven't had a chance to chat since then just because of like player absences. So you haven't missed mm -hmm. any plot points there. Yeah. Oh, and something that we are just kind of beginning to figure out after returning to the village is that we thought that we had returned on like autumn 84 or something along those lines wait uh sorry autumn 88 uh and people uh, townspeople are saying that it's actually winter 15 so that's all the time skip well but yeah less of that's time skip more just much time talking to each other and then you need to move the calendar along I we're, think your machines eat time. We were just taking too much time. It's 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 my fault for for getting too too caught up in the study. Natural state of the universe is procrastination. Um, yeah. So even if your character was missing, had missed some of those sessions, they would still have maybe like dreamlike memories of some version of that. I also give you guys leeway to make it different. Like in Kabath's version, maybe Solinger never came back. And so you're surprised to see him, you know. So, so. I love that. But one thing that is important is your characters, just so things aren't ma absolute madness, you are able, always able to distinguish the difference between memories from like an adjacent reality and the the core, the, the sacred timeline, I'll say. Um, you have an internal sense of what's real and what's not. Okay, got it. 
Yeah, so I think that catches us all. Catches us all. Okay, so back to the present, if such a thing is real. The town of Valenge's Pass, which you now know was once called Salinger's Pass, but maybe the ends of the sign fell off, um, is powdered in white and snow, hints of green from the surrounding forest, pine trees, uh, adding a splash of color to what would otherwise just be in, uh, indeterminate hillsides with the, this whole town built into the, the rock faces. Um, and shallow, shallow hills, rolling hills throughout the area. Um, when you had first approached the town, the first statue that you statues you'd seen were that of Shirley um, and Imav, uh, Salinger's parents. But at the heart of the town square is the big statue of the Kippus, a curled horned creature that you must appease with snacks, unless it snatch up the children. Um, the Maiden's Blessing Festival is one of the, the transitional festivals between autumn and winter. Um, it sort of happens during all the preparations for winter leading up to the actual winter festival. Uh, it's a time when people give each other gifts, but the, 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 the twist is that you're supposed to give these gifts in secret, surprise to, to get them into the recipient's possession without them knowing that you gave it to them. And you see, as you're in the town, you may, you may glimpse children running around and sneaking up on each other. You see one kid with a slingshot. It looks like he's like trying to shoot candy into the pockets of other people from like the edge of a rooftop. Um, things like that. Um, you can see that the sort of the, the banquet areas are covered in giant absurdly sized vegetables like enormous carrots the size of your arm and squash the size of your head it looks as though the lords of the harvest have been at work are they do we see them out and about i'm trying to figure out if they can fit because <laughs> you guys made them big <laughs> I think, think they're trying. Like one what? carved up for the harvest. It's like pieces of him. <laughs> yeah, you guys made him so big. I think they're trapped down there. Oh, uh, sorry. Um, out of character slash in character slash. Uh, whatever happened yeah. to the white pudding? Whatever happened to the white pudding? He went off into the tunnels. Then you guys sealed the tunnels. I will remind everyone that the, that that door to to the to the underground. The dungeon is fucking sealed. Only only a handful of people you should be able to activate it. You should be able to walk through it, even. Yeah, because I, I cast an arcane lock on it. Are you denying mm. everybody dungeon speeds? Interesting. So I didn't the arcane lock, does that persist after it's been opened? I um, I would have you to get you because you gave the mayor the the ability to open. Well. I gave the mayor. Uh, I yes. So so I believe that the way that it works. Let me just see if I can find the actual fucking spell. You touch a closed door, window, gate, chest, or other entryway, and becomes locked for the duration. Um, the duration is until dispelled. Um, you and the creatures you designate when you cast a spell can open the object normally. So, the people that I designated are anyone in uh, the party and the mayor and Fane. No one else should be able to open that door. Can the mayor then designate people himself? Is it one of those like? Is it like Harry Potter house no, rules? No, okay. No, it is. It is strictly just those people that, as men, after as casting the spell, can designate to be able to open the door. Right. So here's sort of my thoughts on kind of on how that went because we did, like when you guys first left the left the dungeon, you had the scene where the messenger showed up for Peach, right? And so we kind of ended the session there and we had whatever time skip some days after that. And so the way I had envisioned it was that door had that door had been locked while you guys were down there doing your things. When you emerged, you opened it to be able to leave the dungeon and you did not like seal it closed again. Um, if you would if you had had the intention of sealing it closed again, we can kind of make that 
potentially work, but I think the mayor wanted it open because there's like they would want to look at all the historical things that are in there and stuff like that and access the gardens that are in there. I thought we had left it open, but that is also why Peach was like, hey shit, did we just leave a door open back there a while ago, you guys? With that pudding and everything? Well you guys sealed the tunnels you guys sealed yeah, the tunnels. Collapsed. The tunnel behind the fight, but which is a real dastardly move. I hope he knew we were doing that. L let's put it this way. More than likely, you might suspect, if the pudding can get through the tunnels that you sealed, it's not going to have trouble with your arcane lock. So all, <laughs> the only thing you're doing is keeping the dwarves from being able to go down. I mean, he jiggles seductively and raised like how many dwarven skeletons? So I think a block dwarf might not be that big of it is yeah i i don't i don't mind whatever happened to it i just wanted everybody to remember that 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 thing existed and could raise the dead on its own yeah mm -hmm. as, lo as long as we all remember because the way i don't we actually don't know how far those tunnels extend although i guess given as nobody had ever sighted those uh door guard and whatnot before i guess there's good mm -hmm. evidence that they don't extend out to the same room. Yeah, but I will say, the first lesson you know, you guys sealed the actual tunnels, so presumably, at least for the moment, the whole vault area um, is just accessible through the doors that you hit. The doors you have at the top, there's a garden down there, and then all of like the historic door and stuff. So. But just so that I can have all the big vegetables in the festival, let's just say that it's open so that they can get the big garden. Yeah. I want so, big vegetables more than safety, so <laughs> Oh yeah, no, I thought that was great. I was just like, wait, big vegetables? That also means pudding could have been let out. Yeah. Um Yeah, sure. Uh, we'll, we'll it's just... a giant flan too. A yeah, big we'll... it's just a big big bat. <laughs> That's fair. I'll just, yeah, we'll, we'll put it out there just for, yeah, just to reiterate, uh, if, if the white pudding can get through the sealed tunnels, the door's not going to stop them, so. I fair, figured fair. I just, yeah, this, that's Esmond being precautionary. No, 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 we're good. Okay. Um, okay, so, to get us started, um, you guys have been in Alenge's Pass for a few hours now, I'll say. Um, the, the, the shops are open, there's, um, sort of like public areas with where there are food and kegs, children are running around, um, people are still in the midst of decorating and sort of setting up, um, for the, up uh, the, uh, for the season, the winter season. Um, and in addition to festival related things, also the sort of preparations that, um, they might do when it gets cold as well in terms of infrastructure. Um, yeah, so give us a little glimpse of each of your characters and what you might be doing um, throughout the town. Um, you make scenes with each other, or just by yourselves. Uh, if we're doing the initial hours of when we arrived in town, Esmond would have gone to find the mayor first and verify the act what the date is. Um, and assuming that it is winter 15. Uh, well, hold on. Instead of doing a synopsis, like, like, give me like a scene, a glimpse of your character in a moment, if you want to be that talking to the mayor or something. Okay. Well, in that case, um, if for several, if it's been several hours, uh, Esmond has uh, sequestered himself in a room uh, in a tavern. Um, where he has the crystal matrix out uh, with the uh, with all of its images kind of splayed across the the walls and he is uh, in he is currently studying and attempting to design uh, some kind of vehicle to use with the airship engine that was sequestered uh, or or uh, taken from the uh the tower right. sounds good yeah so there are sort of blue holographic papers all around you and things pinned to the wall and, uh, as you're kind of going through your notes okay um yeah and as sort of we had discussed you're 
doing some blueprints, mapping them out, but you know um, that without a, without a, a large quantity of dragonstone, uh, the capacity to build an airship does not exist. What about the rest of you guys? Because we left the town so quickly last time. Uh, Araya, having spent all of her time in the city before, either shopping or uh, underground, immediately goes to the tavern to see what likeness they might have up of Peach. <laughs> She's basically searching out the, uh, the deit deitic uh, depictions of all of her friends in town and making note of them fascinated by this evolution of religion. We're in the, trapped in the tavern for like four days because of the blizzard. Maybe that's you guys have You guys have been to the tavern before. Yeah. Oh, thank God. Okay, but regardless, she's hunting down all of the, uh, the deity depictions of her friends and um, <laughs> learning that, you know the Pantheon information you provided? She's mm -hmm. she's learning as as much about all of that as she can, like little tiny yes. sketches of her friends. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And so, yeah, I think for me, I mean, in this moment, you are standing before the statue of the Golden Dancer, and it's almost as if the tavern itself was like built around the statue, as not to disrupt its placement in the same way, like like I mean, whatever Odysseus's house is built around that tree, right, or the bed, the bed or something like that. Right? And so, yeah, it's like they they they. They constructed the tavern all around this thing, as though not to disrupt it. And you can see a statue that depicts Peach with skirts flowing. There's like a long, maybe ribbon or scarf kind of thing um, that's 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 flying off. And miraculously, has it broken off in, in all this time? Maybe it has, and it's just got like this patchwork of stone. Yeah. And you can see like some young. Uh, like uh, halflings who are clearly on a date and they're sitting close to the statue, which seems to be good, like good luck. In in a religiously nerdy way, she makes note of all, all the dresses. Oh, Tries not to make them uncomfortable, but like she's oh. Uh, once we come back to the town, Kebeth, um, after getting a, a excellent meal at the tavern, uh, she kind of mumbles something. She, like, looks down at her armor and kind of mumbles something about, hmm, gotta fix that, gotta fix that, definitely need to polish. Uh, and she <laughs> kind of shouts to whoever's around, off to the blacksmith, and she goes to find the local blacksmith. She'll spend some time there. And if she's not there, you'll find her at the tavern. <laughs> Your two places. <laughs> I think similarly to uh, how Kabeth might be looking to get her armor repaired, Peach is looking to get uh, clothes situated, not for her, but for Salinger. So we see her in one of the uh, clothing shops, uh, most of their uh, sizing made for the smaller clientele, dwarven and halfling folks of Alangi's Pass. And uh, Peach is talking to the proprietor saying, saying, no, he's more than seven foot tall. No, much taller than I am and broad of shoulder. You need to be, it needs to be this pattern, but it needs to be scaled up to not quite a large size creature, but a large medium size creature. Do you, have you ever seen a fur bog? Um, yeah, and so Thedra, the proprietor of uh, the, the Soap for the Winter Shop, is like fiercely taking notes and nodding um, as you're explaining all that. So Peach is special ordering some clothes for Sal, so that when Sean shows up, he can have clothes ready. Nice. If thing has vanished into the fray of the stores, I kind of was picking up food along the way, mostly just snatch from the table. She will crunch down on Rod, which pulls it does needed, but she's focusing more on some of the cooked things that might be there. But she dips in and out of various stores for 
a few hours, I think, going from one place to another, her pack starting to bolt a little bit more suspiciously after each inning, so to speak. And then after that, uh, she goes to the tavern because it seems like that's the only place where people come to socialize and have a drink. Beth, was there a specific thing you wanted to do at the blacksmith or just kind of for atmosphere? Um, yes, but it's secrets. Okay. I sent you some stuff in my channel. Um, I have a scene request for someone who is no longer here, so mm, that's funny. Uh, yeah. Now, we can kind of hand wave that and it'll reveal itself later. Okay, sounds good. Um, I... What is the reaction when Peach walks into the tavern that has her in the middle of it in statue form? Oh yeah, no. I think so there's this an interesting there's there's pretty persistently an interesting mix of reactions from people of Alenke's past to all of you. There's some people who very clearly think that you are like the coming of the the heroes of of old, the heroes that are sort of promised, right? And then there are also people who are, are skeptical about all of that. They think that's just stories. Um, there are people who, like people during the during the autumn festivals, they they dress up as all of you guys as well. And so, to see a likeness of you is not necessarily uncommon. So the people who want to be dismissive of it can be, but there are uh, certainly um, yeah, people that greet you you know with a with a, a sense of awe from time to time and there's there's nowhere that you guys go in this town where you're not noticed by the people of the town uh, you're re renowned in this place so i think as we're all hanging out in the tavern uh near as she can to the back of the room peach is sort of looking at the the statue of herself and just going, huh. Is that really what my hair looks like from the back, though? I imagine it'd be something akin to being like a really famous celebrity and going to a restaurant. Like some people are cool about it and they pretend like not to notice you and some people are staring. But also there's like a big giant statue of you in the middle of it. It's like you go to mm -hmm. Madame Tussauds and there's a big pic, there's you in the middle. Yeah. Occasionally there's a billboard of you in Times Square. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah, so but at some point, um, maybe some hours later, all of you do end up together in the, uh, do end up together in the, in the tavern. Um, and there's a, there's a, a bit of a crowd, people eating, um, and you can, you see, you occasionally, you know, you see a person, uh, one person, one, you see like a dwarf distracting um, a tabaxi friend while someone else like tries to sneak a, a gift into their backpack and they get caught. And there's a, a, a ruckus laughter. So you see uh, the attempted reverse, reverse thief hanging their head in shame. I'm so impressed. Araya, what all, uh, have you read up on this tradition of yours? Read up? No, I don't think that they wrote anything down about it, but I have been watching great fascination. The techniques a lot of the children are using is, look over there, <laughs> but the adults are far more clever. I like that it's all ages. But I don't What's know whether to be ashamed or not. Age and the cutting will always be used in the experience. Age Chris, your mic was like... Yeah, I was going to say, double check which mic your, your Discord is using, because you do sound very, very different. This, this, this. Much better. Yeah, much better. The other one was like. 
for some reason, they just made the music just pop up really loud, unless you change the volume. <laughs> no, you sound a lot better. I was having a hard time hearing what you were saying, and then I realized that it might be that your mic was the wrong mic. Um, so, do you know Agent what you're Cunning. The, yeah, Agent Cunning beats experience. Youth and confidence. I wonder... I wonder what the, 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 the record the record is. Like, what if they snuck like an entire boulder into their back? But then I guess it's not really a present. Hmm. Yes, would the record be based upon the size of the gift that was not noticed? Or how many gifts someone can give out before being caught? Also, you, you want the gift to be found eventually, right? I kind of put a little bit of a time limit on mine all. If they're not found, they're not as good. But I think it needs to be hidden well enough to not be noticed when the culprit is depositing the present. But some of the presents on... are quite small. Does it have to be on the person themselves? Or it... in their room? You tell us, Aurea? You... Can we put it in somebody's pack or do we gotta put it on their person? How close do we gotta get these presents for it to well, count? Um... Um, so, I mean, you know, there's kind of a departure of about a thousand years between, um, in, in, inspiration and celebration, and so I can't really imagine that, like... Girl, you are the second been... coming of the maiden! You get no, to say no. how close we have to be! Alright, we horse you to hand grenades, come on! Well, can I, I usually... Can I just peg you in the head? Can I hit you with it? It counts. I usually try to put it someplace where it should have been all along, but you just didn't know. That, that's and, all. And about this time, there's a there's like a tall, lanky minotaur who, um, who is a server in the tavern um, who makes their their way over to you. Um, you. You see at first, they clearly recognize who you are, but they're trying to play it cool. Um, oh, ah. What's what? Do what would you like to? To drink. Oot. Is he is he asking all of us or is he asking tea? All bread. of you, all of it. Wait, not no drink. Um tea 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 and bread. And and some uh Hakeem or coffee, whatever you call it around here. Something hot How and about, caffeinated. How about some actual beer? Something actually proper oh. for a celebration. Yeah, I like that idea. Yeah. Okay. And any food? Bread. I can't. I can't get enough of it. Really. You know, you go without it for a little while, and then now you just—it's all you can think about when you don't have it. Bread. Steak. <laughs> she yep. says, asking the minute the minotaur. <laughs> as rare as you can make it. <laughs> Let's go ahead. And uh. <laughs> she, she, she yeah. Why, why don't you? Why don't you bring me whatever's the special? Whatever you guys do best here. Your favorite. Uh, yeah, and she kind of lingers at the edge and nods furiously and then gets running. Excellent. Do not, do not scare off the folks. If it's not, why am I scaring them off? I just wanted to ask for what I wanted for. If they're scared of steak, they shouldn't work at a restaurant. I mean, I know <laughs> they... Cutney Ranch folks never really heard of cows, they heard of sheep, but still. This is such a funny idea of like anthropomorphic people. What a, like do they think of animals as the same? Does I mean, eat we, goat? <laughs> we right? some yeah. societies of humans have uh, have eaten monkeys and monkey brains, so. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Monkeys don't have a problem with it. Did you ask the monkey? Most are cannibals. I mean, like they don't have they don't have problems eating one another. Okay. Just yeah. like people. Red and tooth and claw. Well, humans are the only humans and gorillas are the only apes that don't cannibalize. And the cute ones, the gibbons or whatever those things are. Bonobos? Nah, Thank you. they'll eat their dead. 
Benevolent? No, no. Bonobos are benevolent monkeys. They go war world. with each other. Forget they go war with each other and then they kill and eat their okay. they kill and eat the prisoners. Let's stop talking about the cannibalization of, of animals and get back to the scene. Because <laughs> that's uh, canonically ordered um, <laughs> like a pie, a whole pie, <laughs> and uh, a bowl of stew and, and a mug of cider. And then when Ishlan mentions beer. She's like, oh, and a mug of beer, uh, a, a loaf of bread. Um, uh, you got any cookies? Some kind of other, like the pie should be savory. So I want a, something sweet to just bring the whole tray. <laughs> she goes on for a while, <laughs> makes sure that the waiter writes down everything. I think while Kibeth is distracted giving the or her order to the waiter, <laughs> we're going to do the same thing. Oh, that I love it. Really funny. <laughs> Yeah, you both okay. like meet over her yeah, our hands, yeah. like touch in her pockets. Yeah, Peach. Well, Peach was gonna sneak it onto the tray uh, using the uh, Minotaur as a helper. She was gonna do the thing where, like, oh, the little treat is on the dish. Oh, okay. Um, so Peach would uh, try and catch the catch the server. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, you see. Yeah, the servers. You. Well, how do you excuse yourself from the table? Because everyone's there. Oh, I'll be right back. I, I wanted to get <laughs> excellence to something about alcohol, and I don't want Kafir anymore. Or Hakeem. Yeah. Hang on a second. Yeah. And chill. Um, as if she's going to flag him down to get a different drink. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So you've, you've snuck off from the table. Um, you see the server beginning to head their way back there, and they've got a whole tray just covered in food. It's like enormously large because of Cabell's order. Um, and the, you kind of, yeah, you run into, you run into her. Hey, I'm hoping I can sneak something on one of these plates for Cabell, the one over there dressed like the kibbutz. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, okay. Yeah, put it down under, the, under this plate. Um, so Peach would hide a little uh, small box under one of the cloches. Okay. Um, all right, so roll sleight of hand to see what you do. Oh, I have to get my character sheet up. Hang on. I didn't think we'd actually be rolling. I'm actually, for this, I'll let you choose, actually, sleight of hand's kind of more to exciting thing. Let's do deception. Because you have time to plan. Oh, I would love to be able to use performance on this instead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, Six. it's a 23 plus three for a 26. Um, and so, and yeah, and because I know you're kind of doing it at the same time, Ishtalan, what's your, what are you kind of, what are you doing? She was just going to drop a little wrapped, uh, paper wrapped object into one of Kibes, one of the emptier pouches, I think. Okay. Which she assumes is probably empty because Kibes nets. Yeah. Okay, so let's say this kind of happens the time when the server comes back and she's piling food onto the table. They're just the majority of it seems to end up in front of Kebab. There's there's glistening buttered bread, um, a, a, a huge uh, steak gets set up in front of uh, in, in front of you, <laughs> Ishtalan. Um Kebab, roll perception to see if you you notice right away. Should I set a can? Or um yes. Ooh, that was bad. Eh. Oh well actually since I rolled a two, I'm going to use my uh cutting recovery. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Same result. Uh, okay, so Kibeth, roll perception again for Shalati. Because I the first one was for Ah, okay. Um Yeah, so all the all these plates of plates of desserts and, and, and things gets kinda of slid in front of you, Kibeth, and you um I think it's not until you're like eating some of the food and moving the thing that you realize 
there's wait there's something wrapped there between the plates how did they get there and at the same time you feel a tug at your pouch she kind of side eyes Ishtalan, who I, I assume is sitting next to her <laughs> to, in order mm -hmm. to do that um and then she kind of side eyes peach knowing that peach had disappeared for a bit um and uh, at that moment she smiles and she goes oh peach this you have to try this uh and she'll motion whatever she uh like drink she's drinking at the moment it's just divine and she's gonna hand you the mug uh uh to you and inside the mug is going to be something the mug is empty <laughs> which is part of the joke <laughs> peach accepts the clearly empty mug well, I feel like it's a tall mug. I mean, it's not clear, so like, like I, I imagine like a stoneware mug, so you can't see into it until she hands it to you. Okay. But it so feels can... like there's no liquid in this. Um, have you lifted a stoneware mug? Done. So yeah, I feel like you might... wouldn't know until it's in front of you. It might okay. be hard to tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. um, let's see. Could Beth do sleight of hand or deception? Your choice. I think maybe in this case, depending on your approach to it. And then Peach, um, you can do perception or perception or insight um as she's brushing uh as she's passing this mug over to peach she stands up and um aria you feel your horn get brushed by uh Kabeth's arm at the same time and something else will happen when she does that okay. amazing insight check from peach that one's going to be not as subtle, so I don't even feel like it's deception so much as Kabeth just being bad at this, and she's uh, dropped something, like, slides down your horn towards your face. Uh, the lack of subtlety is, is perfect for Kabeth. <laughs> she, she just sort of, like, is staring at the others with a big grin on her face when she realizes that something is moving down her arm, but she won't, like, she won't touch it until, like, so she could faint surprise later. She's just, like, Okay. Someone did it for me too. <laughs> Let's do Peach's first. Um, so yeah, Peach, you just barely notice that there's something off about this mug. Uh, oh, um, Peach would tip the mug and see what's inside. Come back. Um, inside is one moment. Where's my description? Um, it is a bracelet woven out of, uh, like metal wire, um, and it is made out of copper. So it's got a warm tone to it that kind of matches Peach's coppery hair. Uh, and the motif of the woven, uh, metal is in the shape of hearts that interconnect. I love that. I love that in real life. That's adorable. Kabeth, do you do you see anything in front of you, perhaps, with similar energy? Because Peach, I, uh, Peach is gonna take the uh, the bracelet and put it on immediately, because it's a very sneakily delivered gift, very so subtly uh, handed. Yeah, what does what does what does Kabeth find there on between the plates? Ah, a little uh, pink box uh, in the shape of a flower. So there's a little box in uh, Gen Chat. That's a little origami box. Is it big and enough it to is, snack in? It's just about the size of like a chocolate. Then she could put a chocolate in there. That's perfect. Well, open it. Kabeth, that's just the box. Oh. Kabeth opens the box. Inside the box is a chocolate. Kabeth, do you eat it? I'm going to save this for later. She's very, very happy. And she goes to put in her pouch, the same one that uh, Ishtalan had like nudged. And she kind Kibet. of oh, looks at Ishtalan to like put the chocolate box in and it starts pulling something else out. Kibet, you're going to want to eat that already. now. Oh, I have to eat it now? Well, you have to eat it within the next hour. Oh, is it going to hop away or something? No, but it won't be as good after an hour. Okay, I'm gonna eat it after I finish all of this. Yeah, it won't take you an hour, will it? 
No. Just don't wait just too long, because if you wait too long, it'll just be regular chocolate and it won't be as good. Okay. Kibeth will make sure that she eats it in time. What does Ishlan say? Uh, Ishlan, for a part, is not actually saying anything. She has just drawn the dagger at her back that she was trying to cover for the jostle uh, and is going to town on the stake, you know, like demolishing it <laughs> layer by layer. Like systematically? Like. Yeah. <laughs> She just raises uh, a brow at Kibeth when she reaches into the pouch that she had put something into. And it is a circular, very hard um, thing about the size of like, um, I don't know, maybe two, three inches diameter. Uh, and just wrapped in like a simple brown paper. Looks like it's waxed uh, on the interior with a string around it in a fairly complicated web just because it's round and wrapping tying such string around round object is very difficult. Um, is is Esmond there with them or is he up in his room? Esmond's up in his room. Be with the rest of the class. This is why you're uh skinny. <laughs> <laughs> you're just not eating. <laughs> That's like uh, Kibeth sneaks him food all the time. Like she like uh, leaves food. I for him. no. So uh, I I will say that there is probably he Esmond would have requested somebody to uh, come and uh, bring him a fresh cup of Hakim every hour or so, and he probably does have like a small dish of food that he is eating. So there. Peach would deliver us <laughs> yeah, gift it. with the Hakim. Ha <laughs> ha! Gifted you, Esmond. A little raw steak. <laughs> um. Okay. So wait. So Peach, you're trying to sneak a gift into the Hakeem delivery? Yes. Okay. Same way that um, she do otherwise. She's she's working with the staff of the tavern to get all of these gifts to her friends. Okay. So. Okay, so one of the like the server the server is going to take Hakeem to to Esmond. Okay, so yeah, so you see the server, um, yeah, looks like they've got a mug in hand on a dish and they're getting ready to head up the stairs. Peach would flag them down and say, "Oh, is that going up to uh, Esmond Clockrat, the young man who looks like the uh, watchmaker, the watchman?" Yes, yes. Could you also bring this up to him? And she will oh. hand over a, uh, a saucer that has like an overturned cup on it. Uh, just you know, let him know that uh, that he should consume it promptly. Okay, and it'll 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 be a secret. Mm-hmm. She she winks. Um, um. So now she has two trays in hand. That's up the stairs. Um. As we knock on the door. Uh, go, uh, close, close the, the crystal matrix, uh, but walk over with, uh, the old, old empty mug in hand, opens the door. Yes, hello? Yeah, so you see, uh, Malky, the minotaur server, like, thin, very tall. Um, each of her hands are full. She knocked on the door, you're not sure, but she offers the two saucers to you. One of them is upside down. I, uh, okay, um, you can come place that on the table, uh, so I, here, come in, come in, um, yeah. try so and ducks, ducks to the doorway, comes inside, sits down, it says, oh, her eyes go wide as she looks at the, uh, like the holographic papers and stuff like that. Just, no, 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 I have the crystal matrix closed, so it's just closed, papers so. and stuff, uh, up around the walls. Fair, fair, fair. Blank um, papers, you look like a madman. They're not blank. There, there's, there, there are, there are blank pages. There are blank pages, but there are also pages with actual notes uh, yeah. across the walls. Yeah. So her eyes kind of go wide for a minute. Yeah. So, so she does not see the crystal matrix. She looks along. She goes, "Oh, are you an? You're an inventor. As an engineer of sorts, uh, by trade, more than anything, or, uh, yeah. So, so yes, sort of, yes." <clears throat> Ah, the watchman would be proud. And then she, uh, without seeming to make the connection, <laughs> turns and sets up the door. 
Uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, thank, thank you. I, I, I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, Esmond will, uh, take that, uh, after she closes the, the door, he'll, uh, open the crystal matrix, uh, again, and, uh, remembering that there's an upside down mug, we'll go and investigate that. Mm. Yeah, so there's an upside down mug on a plate. What do you do? Check for chips. Uh, <laughs> um. So, <laughs> man, so I'm I'm tired. Uh, uh, he'll just kind of uh, tip it over. Uh, Gently uh, to see if anything come immediately comes spilling out from it. <laughs> what happens? Out tumbles a small pink box with a little floral, uh, like folded origami on the top. Uh, this one has a little note on the top that says, uh, "It says open me," because she realized that people had trouble with that before. So they'll have notes on them from going forward. Is it obviously Peach's handwriting? Yes, it's obviously Peach's style. This thing is is like a pink hexagonal origami box that she's carefully folded and it looks like something she made. Uh, what? Oh, shit. Right. Uh, okay. Um, uh, go on. And he, he opens it. Inside is a chocolate. And inside the paper, it says, eat this. Do you eat it? Esmond stares at it for a moment and kind of side eyes Zephyrus, who's uh, zipping around next to him. I mean, if if she were going to try and kill someone, it would be through through food or drink, right? Yeah. But I mean, I, mean, I haven't pissed her off recently. It's probably fine, and he'll just pop it. Oh, do you eat it in one bite, or do you eat it slowly? He'll take one one bite of it he'd take like a like a third of it in that case uh you taste that it is a dark chocolate truffle and as it melts in your mouth you taste a whiskey ganache just melting in with the chocolate in a way that is invigorating but it also makes you thirsty like you really want to go downstairs why do i go downstairs i have a cup of coffee or a cup of Hakeem right next to me, so I'll take a sip of that. So weird. You're still thirsty. <sighs> I'm trying to... You eat the rest of the stuff. chocolate? You should eat the rest of the chocolate. No, no, no. Esmond puts down the chocolate, and now he's now he's agitated slightly. <laughs> I'm trying to do shit. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, Esmond's gonna find his satchel and pull out a journal. Um, uh, it's it's a small journal, so that he, that uh, that he keeps plenty of notes in, but he also keeps a running list of things to be wary of from from his friends, uh, from pranks pulled on him over the years, and he wants to jot this particular notation or make this particular notation, uh, and he. Forgive, but never forget. <laughs> I want this to be the notebook that Kabeth tried to hide her gift to him in. <laughs> He's got a handful of notebooks. We can say it's this one, sure. Okay, yeah. So as he opens the notebook. Uh, into your lap falls a metal bracelet. Um, yours is uh, a geometric woven pattern of silver and gold. Uh, and it has... Um, almost a reminiscent, it's not quite gears, but it seems like Kabeth was trying to make gears without doing the intricacy of it. Um, and it fits perfectly around your wrist if you were to put it on. That's when he observes it, and then places it on the table and just stares at it a little grumbly. <laughs> Never um, puts it on. This one's not enchanted. <laughs> mm -hmm. Do you eat the rest of the chocolate? No, Peach. Esmond does not eat the rest of the chocolate. He, that, that is also pushed aside. The effects of presentation last for one hour. 
You almost feel as though there are dark forces conspiring that want you to eat chocolate and wear bracelets. I, I had to go get this, chocolate. I hate this holiday. <laughs> so, uneaten chocolate bracelets sit there before you. <sighs> God, all right, fine. One hour. One hour. They get one hour. Then I got to come back up. You guys aren't uh, eating my Willy Wonka chocolates. Esmond, uh, Esmond, go ahead and uh, puts the bracelet on, uh, noting how uh, how well put together it is. Uh, figuring that it was Kibeth who uh, who made it, and will pop the rest of the chocolate uh, before uh, gathering Zephyrus uh, to head downstairs to join everyone. Oh, if you pop the rest of the chocolate, then the whiskey that fills your mouth rushes in it's more a shot of warmth and courage than actual liquor and as it blends with the chocolate that you already have in your mouth it makes you feel brave am i still thirsty yeah really thirsty fucking balls all right yep still going mm -hmm. downstairs <laughs> um Kibeth's probably in the middle of opening up uh Ishtalan's gift Uh, it is a very hard white looking sphere um, that has kind of a matte speckled out exterior uh, with what looks like flakes of like little crystals of sugar uh, that shine off of it. It smells a little bit sweet. It smells like candy. Do I get, do I eat this? Is this a, is this the thing I eat? I mean, you can do whatever you want with it. You lick it. It's sweet. You keep licking it. It's still sweet. It takes a really long time to get through any of these layers. And as you lick through a layer, you can see different colors being revealed underneath. You're eating Ixalans and not mine? Kebab. Oh, sorry. <laughs> she wraps it back up and puts it back in her pocket. She, I promise I'll eat the chocolate soon. Um, but she goes to hug you, Ishtalan, in a very awkward way. <laughs> I feel like Ishtalan's gonna like start backing up. Nope, oh, I'm just like. Oh, wait, you're not transmitting? <laughs> oh, she's like, oh, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, oh. Fine, you'll get yours later. And uh, <laughs> she'll look over at Araya and she's like, Araya, there's something on your horn. And she winks. <laughs> Aria has been like patiently pretending it's not there for like this, but like the stupid grin on her face the whole time. She's like, <laughs> "Yours is silver, uh, in a pattern woven that looks kind of like wa waves, water." Is it a bracelet or a horn bracelet? It is. A, I think that it. Well, your horns are pretty substantial, so I feel like it could fit either. Um, but it is intended for her wrist. Oh, okay. If she'll, she she'll made it for your horns, she'll, she'll, she, she'll, you know what, she'll say, uh, and just, you know, um, if you want another horn decoration, I could make a matching pair that, you know, goes for your horns, so you could have a wrist, and then you could have one on each wrist, and then one on each horn, and that would be really, really cute. Yes. Um, I do, but we might have to wait until next year before you make me another one. I know that I celebrate hey. all the time, but this seems like a once a year thing. Oh, I would just I mean, make it for you because you're my friend. Is there amongst my bread and tea <laughs> a peach thing? Oh, I hadn't had one. No, it's fine. No. no, you don't have anything. I got bread and tea. Kate was a little bit distracted in real life, so Kate hadn't, Kate hadn't thought of one yet. No, 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 no. Have we secured rubes here yet? I mean, obviously Esmond has, but the rest of us. Um, sorry, what was that? Have we secured rooms? Yeah, I like secured rooms. Yeah. But we don't have like any of our packs down here with us, or do you? That that well, that's what I was wondering. Um, yeah, no, no yeah, you guys have, you guys have rooms here, so if you. You can have your stuff or not have your stuff if you want to. Um, let's see. Roll. No, I'll have you roll for it. I'm going to say, uh, yeah, area. You 
as you're examining your gift, glancing out the window, you see out in the street, you see a uh, fan um, and two other, two other dwarves. Um, and they seem to be kind of uh, laughing. Um, you, um, fan seems to give one of them a hug. Um, and you see another one looks like trying to sneak a gift into his, into his backpack. In fact, uh, Kabath is currently trying to sneak her gift into Ishvalon's pocket. <laughs> oh, roll, roll sleight of hand. Or deception. I guess this is more spontaneous. <laughs> yeah, I think we're trying to sneak it into the pocket. What is sleight of hand? Yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> I rolled a four. Perfect. I literally cannot get lower than that. <laughs> At least if it's a perception. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you you definitely notice <laughs> a hand. I guess unless I roll a one, but that didn't happen. <laughs> so <I'm> just <sighs> and then like kind of like pinches her wrist between two fingers and then lifts it out. <laughs> the pocket maybe still holding the thing and we'll, we'll look at the kind of like it's a, a beautiful woven band of like silver and oxidized silver that forms a scale pattern just this is this is lovely and since you can no longer try to trick me and then she'll, she'll actually give her a hug Kibeth is very happy she hugs you back as you, yeah, as the two of you hug, there's a slow, high-pitched sound that grows, and then tsh, the slight sound of shattering glass, remnant, and that's a thing that you've realized comes to mean something's changed. And so as uh, as Esmond's coming down the stairs, um, the rest of you, Araya, Kabeth, Peach, Salinger, um, yeah, you see, uh, you see Esmond. Coming down the stairs with uh, a weary, uh, kind of a a, a, a weary, study wearied look on his face. Asmin, are you thirsty? Uh huh. That's too funny. We got some fresh Akeen down here. You know what? There's a seat next to Araya. And Shalati. There is. Or er, no, it's Shalon. Gosh darn it! I was getting good, and then I fetched yep. it up. Oh yeah, wherever you want to sit, as. Zuzman approaches the table. Salinger, wait, you were just, you were just daydreaming. Wait, what's going on? And in front of you on the table, there are just piles of food, bread, and things like that. And um, there's also you, a little pink gift box. There's a little, there's a little, a little box in front of Salinger. What? You said it's pink. Yeah. Oh, how'd that get there? Strange. Is it also food? Maybe. Kabeth, um, open it. Find out. <laughs> when Kabeth notices Salinger, she um, kind of jumps out of her chair for and sits back down. She's like, oh, you're here. Right. You've always been here. Right? I did, I I was gone for a little attempt. while. He'll, as saying that, he'll open the little box before touching the food. Uh, inside is a what looks like a small white chocolate macaron. Uh, it sort of looks like an abstract uh, peach shape, but it's pink. you eat it? It's a macaron. Well, I gotta eyeball it a little bit first and appreciate the craftsmanship. It's Assuming fun. that Peach is very distracted by I'm watching very distracted. Salinger. Yes, uh, yes, she reaches um, either with her around with her hand or like she literally uses, extends out her foot either way um, to discreetly try and tuck something into the back of her uh, Peach's 
feature checks, you get a disadvantage perception check. Oh, but I'm still so perceptive, though. Very perceptive. My skirt's just a little too tight. You catch a little, you catch a little tug. And you look down and you see a filmy little scarf uh, that looks like it has uh, patterns of it. It's a peach, like orange, blush dawn color, and even over the smells of the food. And drink around, you get you catch a faint whiff of ripe fruit. Oh, thank you. Uh, Sal, there's a similar scent wafting out of that box. In addition to the macaroon. Yeah, it's like a peach-scented macaroon. So I thought there was something else in the a, box. That's right. Infection. Was. No. Um, let me have actually everybody roll investigation. So. When Esmond heard the wine before, he was the only one who heard it, right? This is the best I've ever rolled for like a a, a skill like this ever. Um, it's not great. You mean the high pitch sound in the the shattering glass? Oh, wait, I was mistaking that for something else. Okay. The paradox sound. Yeah, I have shit in both space. Oh, okay. Yeah, we'll say it's, um, we'll say it's both, both Peach and Aria. Um, I think you realize, as you, as you, you see Salinger there opening his gift, uh, you realize there are statues of all of you. There are no depictions of Salinger in it. Like, uh, Gabeth will eye Sal's chocolate, and she'll pull her, her plates are now clear in front of her, so she'll pull out her chocolate and she'll eat hers. Gabeth, do you eat yours in one bite? Of course. All right, so the first initial thing that you get is that it crunches through and it kind of explodes in your mouth like it's pop rocks or popcorn, right? But then instead of dissolving, it starts to bubble. And then as you bite into it more, uh, it develops into a nougat that as you chew it, develops a deeper, richer, more complex, caramelly flavor. And the more you chew it, the more delicious it becomes. And the effect will last for one hour until you swallow or until you swallow it. Kabes is a this very interesting problem. <laughs> she chews it for a while, not not for a full hour, but probably like a minute <laughs> for the next like five minutes, Kabes is sitting there chewing this thing. All it would take is so a slight <laughs> A slight culinary miscalculation in Kabez's head explodes. This is not Willy Wonka. Prestidigitation is such a good spell. You can yeah. do basically anything to a one, a one square foot thing for an hour. Kabez's going to chew this until she feels the need to speak in the conversation. So I'm going to be canonically chewing this until Kabez says her next thing after that, like, interesting. And then she'll just sit there and chew. I think I'll wait on my macaroon. Said well, she said, After she said there was a time limit, though. Uh, yeah, don't wor wait more than an hour, but you don't have to eat yours in front of everybody. That's fine. Um, before too long, the, uh, the door, of this door of the tower and <laughs> flying up and Digsman Samsel comes running in, sees you guys, her eyes go wide. She runs over your table, climbs up onto one of the stools. Hey! Pushes over some bread and a small plate. Oh, 
Oh, I love bread. She pulls it over and starts eating it. Oh, so, um, you guys get your, your, your rooms? What do you think? What do you think of festival? I, I like where their hearts are at. Did you see some puppet carrots are? Yeah, but carrots are something else. Um, uh, Samsel, what is that over there? And Peach will just literally mm -hmm. do a try and make it look. And she will put a little parcel onto Samsel's plate. Oh, do you roll a roll a slight hint. Oh, you succeed. Yay! <laughs> yes! Just a major look works. Yeah, she looks over at the door. Oh, oh she looks back. <gasps> There's a little big box <laughs> on her plate! Chokes what? on her bread a little bit. Oh, oh it's a gift! <laughs> Shalon says, wow, it can be that simple. Hmm. Uh, she looks around and she views suspiciously. It looks at the gift. Is this one? It's on my plate. Is this for me? Yeah, you should probably open it. If it's on your plate, it's probably food. Pops the rest of the bread into her mouth and takes the tears of the wrapping off. What's inside? It's chocolate. Does she eat it? She looks at it, sniffs it. I love chocolate. She pops the whole thing in her mouth. It pops with rich, deep notes of Hakeem and cinnamon and red pepper. And it'll wake you up and make you feel ready for adventure! Her eyes go wide. Whoa! That's good! Dang. And she's like, looks at you suspiciously. I'll, I'll figure out who it was. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, I think it's on. Uh, having made her way through the enormous stick in front of her, uh, is going to push back from the table. It says, is there no place to dance around here? Is this not a dancing festival? Oh, I've seen people dancing in the streets. Um, and, uh, I mean, they just do it, seem to do it anywhere. I, um, I think it's, I think it's like a golden dancer thing. There's not certain spots for it. Like, hmm. Well, I will. I shall see if I can find some of this dancing. Yeah. Or maybe we can start up something here. And, and she's going to look around at the crowded tavern. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, Samsel says, uh, Oh, oh I, I just passed some people out in, the, out in the square. It looked like they were dancing. They were doing the dancing where it's like everyone's got their arms linked together and they're going in a circle. Is that the kind of dancing you want? Sure. Come, come with me. It's been ages. Yeah, she reaches out and grabs your hands and tries to pull you out. She'll, she'll be pulled. Vanishing out of the door. Araya, as you watch Samsel leave out the door, oh, what? There's a little box. You see Peach put it on your, your plate. She, you, she's lost her. My perception's yeah. not great. I don't know. Let Peach is not rollies. trying to be sneaky about this one. Oh, okay. she, just wants to, she just wants to make sure everybody gets one. But I will roll. If, if you really if I'm not, yeah, we got to roll. Uh, my... Oh my god, that's so sneaky! Perfect. Keeping it. Take this. Array is bad at her day. I, I think how um I think the server comes and starts clearing some plates, uh, and then as a plate is cleared, uh, a little a little uh, new clean dessert plate with a little pink box is left in front of Araya, uh, and Araya does not notice it immediately. Nope, she doesn't notice it for a really long time. Like it's sitting by her hand, and she's just like, Araya, the the effect does only last an hour, so. It <gasps> Oh, you're getting so good at this. I saw you do some of the other ones, but this one's great. I uh, should pop it open. Do you eat it? Oh, yes, but like so right, slowly. 
so sl- it's stupid how slow she eats it. Good, because this is a chocolate designed to be enjoyed and eaten slowly. It is a white chocolate truffle infused with lavender, vanilla, and a little bit of lemon. But it's not a lemon you've had before. It's a lemon that you've only really smelled. It kind of tastes the way you always kind of to eat the incense at church a little bit. <laughs> but in a way that is is both savory and satisfying in a way that eating incense would never really be and it brings you this inner peace and serenity and then also makes your breath smell like lemon as she's like nibble 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 she's like you should you should really you should really market these i think when we when we settle back home again this is hmm. oh it's not picking up one yet yeah, and about this time you see Esben settle, or yeah, so Esben settles down at the table with you guys. Okay, you've got me for an hour before I go back upstairs. So, what's uh, what's what's up with everyone? I'm so glad you came down to join us, Is. That's good. Did you like your chocolate? That one was for me. It, it was certainly tasty, yes. Did I did I hear that? It definitely sounded like you just said bitch. It was certainly tasty. Sure, that's canon. Why not? No, uh, I think I stuttered. Uh, no, uh, he said um, certainly yes, it was tasty or something along those lines. So what are we all discussing? We're kind of enjoying the festival. Ix was asking about uh, about if there's any dancing happening. And uh, I was distracted by the fact that uh, I apparently, and she looks over at the statue of herself, am somehow uh, the symbol of all that dancing. So that's been fun. Yeah, that seems to track. Yeah, you guys. Yeah, you're you're sitting at one of the large tables uh, in the tavern. It's c- covered in food and the remains of remains of gift wrap. Um, out through the window, um, you can see people out in the streets. You also you can you can see that there's um, a group of people, sort of right in the ten- center of the town square, who are engaged in um, um, yeah, like a big a big group dancing. They have their arms linked to kind of. Daisy chaining around in circles. Um, you see Ishlan there along with Samsel. Um, go ahead. I think on her way out, she would have clapped a fan on the shoulder and tried to drag him along into dancing, and while doing so, slipped something to his pocket. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you kind of grab him, and you realize that he's he's with these two other uh, dwarves, and he looks surprised. Um, and as you start to drag him away, um, they kind of sl- slap him on the back and kind of shove him to go along with you. Um, She's basically like, the more the merrier. Just come along and dance. Yeah. Um, roll, yeah, roll your your sleight of hand to slip in the gift. Let's see if I can get above a ten this time. Okay. Real safe. I was really confused as to why Chris was playing piano music in this tavern, and then I realized it's my father playing piano. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> oh, it's <laughs> like this is an interesting music choice, Chris. <laughs> Very immersive. <laughs> um yeah as you go to slip the the gift in um you, your, your hand kind of gets caught for a second um but you, you realize Finn kind of freezes and then he but he pretends not to notice it's not just like looks a little bit defeated as she starts to move, keeps moving toward it it's like zero out of three uh, <laughs> i've lost my touch <laughs> yeah and so before too long um you guys are headed that way and Finn says um uh, hey, these are these are my brothers. Um, this is um, this is uh, Tala. Do uh, oh, do you want to be called Tala? Oh, uh, oh, that was to me. East, call me, call me Ishtalan. Uh, uh, Ishtalan, this is Doral Tander. Uh, yeah, be f- Doral Tander, how old do you dance? Oh. oh. And before too long, you guys are joining in with a big crowd. 
Um, yeah, Fane, Fane seems a little more reserved, but Doral and Tander are all about it. Um, they're kicking up their boots and spinning around, and Fane, Fane's, uh, uh, yeah, he's he's participating, but you can tell that he's a little more reserved. Um, but he Very doesn't. Well, he, he doesn't. Yeah, oh no! I was just saying, he 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 doesn't go for the gift yet. He's, he's, he's seems to be pretending like he didn't notice. As it should be. As it should be. Yes. Uh, Array is gonna go up and stand next to Fate, watching people dancing, and let clap her hands. It's. I think no noticing Array there, she's going to try and pull both of them into the next round. Oh, no, oh, oh, if, if uh, need be, she will lead Araya in the way that a good dancer does. <laughs> oh, resistance is high, but desire to please is also high. Shit. Yeah, a fan somebody like, um, mm, no, okay. <laughs> oh, you too. Just made for each other to be wallflowers. <laughs> Wallflowers are a very necessary part of a party. We we make the circle that everyone dances in. But part of the circle is that everyone goes in at some point. You, like you so, and then she's gonna like move out of the rain and push Araya in, just completely abandoning her to her fate. Uh, oh god! With that push, she's also going to um, try and leave something in. Uh -huh. I guess maybe her hood. Yeah. Hey. Well, uh, probably your slide hand. Yeah, get better than a 17. No, yeah, no, no absolutely shit. <laughs> I'm so sorry. You had le legit plus also. Is it, this is not be so sneaky. Are you not a, like a so sneaky funny. character? She's what? Sneaky. She's a plus seven. She just keeps getting entire world. That, that is without proficiency. I have a plus seven and yet. Guys, I think we need to trade in this ranger for a new model. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, oh, yeah, so you're, you're a little bit. Oh. Yeah, no, yeah. Like, your wrist gets tangled up in like excess fabric. Oh shit! Oh shit! No. Wait, wait, wait! Wait, no! You don't want me to dance? <laughs> no, I'm. It, okay. No, no. You you definitely should dance. Just and then she like tries. So at least get the package in there. It jingles faintly. Okay. Um, but. Uh, you can clearly feel the weight of it in your hood. She ca she catches on. She stops being like. Uh, uh, uh. She's like, okay, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just dance that way. <laughs> she's, 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 she pretends that she doesn't have a present, but she like pulls her hood close while she's dancing in the cold weather. She'll give up and just keep dancing for a little bit. Araya's dance is a bouncy walk. Yeah, before too long, you guys are sucked into the charybdis of all the people dancing. Kind of, it's very, very circular. Lots of arms linking, and um, you find yourself kind of spun into a new partner, a stranger, and then like then just around and around and around. People seem kind of to go. I feel that's an acrobatics vibe. It's acrobatics ish. Or is it performance? You dance typically performance. Are you rolling to see how well you're dancing? <laughs> so much better. Oh, let's roll to see our moves. This is exactly the opposite of what I anticipated. Come on. <laughs> sure, fine. <laughs> Don't you have like an inspiration or something? Yeah, <laughs> but this is funny. No, it's. <laughs> Yeah, at some point, Ishlan's going the opposite direction. Like, she gets spun around, she goes the opposite direction of the crowd, and there's, like, a, a traffic jam and a tumble of people, and everyone kind of bursts into laughter. Oh, Peach helps Ishlan up, and in doing so, slips her a gift. Really I think Ishlan right? throws up her hands, but manages to at least play it off uh, with some grace. And she's like, ugh, I'm too weighed down by all the by all that meat I ate. A good meal. Uh, yeah, Doral, one of Fan's brothers, is laughing. It's like, it happens more often than you would think. Oh, <laughs> what the oh fuck? my, my god. <laughs> oh man, you're doing Esmond rolls tonight. Holy shit. This is great, I love it. This is like, 
the story you did opposite story time. This is so good. I love this story that the days are done. Alright, secret gift is planted. What did you plant it? Oh, it's just um Peach isn't trying to do this subtly, she's just doing really good at it. Uh, it's up your sleeve. Uh, so Peach helped you up, and then at, in doing so, she transfers palm to palm, and uh, you feel pressed up against your sleeve uh, a small box. I think uh, she is going to wave off any more further inclusion into the dance ring for a bit, and says, I think I need a drink. Uh, maybe maybe some more beer will help loosen me up. I've forgotten. I don't know what the fuck happened. And she's gonna wander back to the tavern, and um, I think she's actually going to try and sneak around to try and find Edna's room. Mm, okay, so you're sneaking off in order to try and, yeah. Do you... Esmond's room? Okay. Um, yeah. So roll... As you, you, you make your way away from the crowd, heading upstairs. Roll stealth, Esmond, roll perception. And just to kind of paint a picture for myself, uh, Esmond, the the dancing is all happening like outside the tavern a little bit, mm -hmm. but yeah. I imagine Esmond is like still, he's like still set up at a table. He's probably got a, a small glass of wine with him now. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you're probably still at the table that you guys have. At the, uh... Beth is still sitting there chewing the chocolate. <laughs> I'm not, I've had one oh. roll over 10. <laughs> Oh, maybe I'll still at the table eyeing safe. the macaroon as well. Oh, perfect, actually. Kabeth will finally audibly swallow this, and she's like, that was good, but that was weird. <laughs> I hope yours isn't as weird as mine. Um, she reaches underneath her chair, and <laughs> you hear this, like, big clunk. Um, <laughs> and she's like, hang, hang on, wait, <clears throat> hold on. And she, she's, like, struggling to, to pull, and then she finally... <clears throat> She's like, looks at the table and just uses her arm to like, she clears stuff over to the side and then plops Sal's giant hammer onto the table. Um, it's got a big red bow tied around the center. And she's like, this is not, this is, this is, this whole thing is not your gift. This is me giving you back your hammer, which has been lovely. Not that I've gotten to use it, but is also really, really heavy. And I kind of, she points to her plate armor and she's like, it's kind of hard to carry all these things things so I, I couldn't like keep as much food on me as i normally do so you should definitely have this back but you should take this bow off it you know before you use it because it would be kind of weird if you like went to hit an enemy and it had a giant bow and then you were like what's that bow on there but actually maybe that would be a good distraction tactic i like the bow on it he says he slides it towards him still holding the macaroon and looking at it suspiciously and so okay. um if you put your hand on the bow you'll notice that there seems to be something underneath it Oh. What is it? It falls the bow. Um, wrapped delicately around the handle, uh, beneath the bow is a uh, bracelet uh, that is Kabeth made, and it is woven wires. Uh, yours is five different colors of metal, so like uh, gold, silver, oxidized silver, copper, um, maybe something else in there. Uh, I already lost count. Um, and it's a beautiful and intricate braid. Uh, and it will fit you perfectly. This is lovely. He says as he ties the bow onto his wrist. Come the uh, then puts the bracelet on the other one. The ribbon is also very nice. It's silk. <laughs> Only the finest for Sal. Um, I need to take a five minute break. So let me do fresh snacks and stuff like that. That's fine. Um, I have more conversation to have with Sal, but we can do that when you get back. Yeah, that's good. Cool. Give me a chance to react. Yeah. So after many rounds of dancing. Um, you do eventually find your way back we'll say, into into the tavern. Who who went who went dancing? Which characters? She danced, but then got off the floor after having done enough and noticing that uh, Ishlan is no longer keeping track of her, and then sneaks 
away. Can we actually finish the conversation before the other people return? Because I don't think Beth would have it with everyone. Yeah, yeah, sure. Let's do that. Because I feel like they'd be dancing long enough to... to yeah, for sure. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So, Kabeth, um, as grins as Sal puts the bracelet on and, and the bow, and she goes, uh, remind me, did Peach go dancing? Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, Kabeth goes, just so you know, uh, I, I kind of have weird, fuzzy memories of you being here and not being here and, and everything that's happened tonight. I don't really know why you're back because that's all kind of fuzzy too, but I seem to remember while you were gone that it was hard for Peach and and I want you to know that I looked out for her and made sure she was safe because I know she's like super important to you and, and she's important to me too and I don't know, well I just wanted you to know that I, I looked out for her so she's she's doing okay now. Thanks, I know you would do something like that. You're always good at looking out for people in between snack times. I mean, I look out for people during snack times too. I may seem distracted by the snacks, but I promise you that if worst case happened and somebody tried to hurt someone that I care about while I was eating, I'd definitely put the food down and save it for later. <laughs> she grins. But no, no, it was... I remember it was hard for Peach, but... I'm sure she's really glad you're back. I don't know what's up with that chocolate, though. It, it might be really, really weird. I mean, delicious. Like, super delicious, but also really weird. She kind of eyeballs as... And she's like, did you get any gifts yet? She winks. <laughs> I'm here specifically because of uh, a gift I received from Peach. Appreciate it so much. And then he uh, holds up his small glass of wine and you see his uh, the uh, bracelet that you gifted kind of glimmer under uh, under his, uh, the uh, under his sleeve. And uh, I got yours as well. I, um, mm, I'm sorry that I completely forgot to get anything for any of you all. Um, but thank you. It's okay. You're you're working on really important stuff and you don't have time to uh, sit and make stuff. I mean, I also polished my armor, but and she's like, see how shiny it is? Super shiny. It does look super shiny. I like that. Yeah, um, but no, it's okay. As I mean, we all know that you care about us. You tell us that you care about us by working really, really hard. Even when you're annoyed with us for not understanding what you're trying to say. Yeah, yeah, I uh, I need to work on that. It's been, <laughs> it's not been a good uh, week or so. Oh, well, actually, almost three weeks, apparently. I'm still trying to wrap my head around that. Um, yeah, uh, after this, uh, this whatever Peach gave me wears off, I'll be returning back to my room to... Uh, keep working um at some point kibeth if you have time i'd like to to speak with you a little bit um about about the uh the airship that we were discussing previously with the land vehicle whatever whatever we can do kibeth like side eyes the window to outside and the people dancing she goes well i was gonna dance for a bit but we could work on important stuff too that's that's good you can go and dance i'm not gonna go and dance i i feel very good right now to my own chagrin uh but i'm not gonna go dancing you go dance go have fun i'm gonna be up late anyways we don't it's not gonna be a long cover it could be long just come up whenever you whenever you're ready whenever you, you got can. it and she uh stands up and she's like i hope this goes better than the last time i tried to dance <clears throat> she runs outside <laughs> hey do me a favor kid uh take zephyrus with you he has a he hasn't had fun in a in a while and zephyrus will come zip around uh your head a little bit and just he'll for as long as you're outside he'll just be zipping in in and around uh people all throughout the dance circle before she goes out the door she'll kind of look back towards him i i don't think she'll go so far away that she's not still within like speaking distance and just say you know you could have fun too if you wanted and she'll grin and hold a hand out, like, come dance? <sighs> Maybe next time. I'm going to hold you to that. And she'll grin at him and run out the door. 
Okay. I think, yeah, as everyone goes out and dances through the window, you can see a light snow coming down. A lot of the snow has been you know, shoveled out of the, 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 main, the main square. But um, Esmond and Salinger, looking out the window, you can see all your friends dancing. You see like some a tumble here and there. You can see uh, Dixman Somsel out there with them, along with Thane and his brothers. Um, but yeah, but there, I think there's a moment where it's just Esmond and Salinger left at the table with like half-eaten food, but still plenty to snack on. Drinks on the table. And I can go out and dance with them. Just don't feel comfortable yet, if that makes sense. Still eyeballing the macaroon. I mean, considering whatever it is that you went through, um, yeah, that seems reasonable. Uh, just, you know, be aware that part of their jubilation out there is is for your return. It really is a shame I don't feel the... I'm an incredibly good dancer, you know. Arguably the best of us. And Peach would challenge uh, you to that role, and she would be thrilled for it. The trouble is, he says, rolling the macaroon across his knuckles, it might ruin the entire festivities if I want to show them up with my incredible moves. It's the same reason you're not going out there, I'd wager. Sure, we can go with that for for my excuse, yeah. And that would have worked on Casey. He would have ran out the door dancing immediately. Oh, you know how O can be. It's always, uh, always willing to take up any challenge. I, uh, I'm trying to, uh, follow in his stead to a degree. I just, um, I'm doing better than I was, uh, a few days, weeks ago, whatever. But while you were gone, it's, uh, hell, right, right before you returned, in fact, um, I was not doing great. Uh, and I'm still... Uh, I'm not good. I'm better than when I than what I was, but I'm not good. And I'm trying to to find. I'm trying to find a better place than I currently am, and I. I don't know. I. Uh, I just feel like I need to be working constantly. Something you're trying to avoid thinking about? Maybe. Or trying to prove. I I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's partly why I want to talk to Kibath, partly why I want to get back to Shepherd's End. It's... Are you drinking right now? I'm sipping. Uh, you can see a cup next to him that maybe has had two sips out of it in the entire time he's been sitting down. He's taken maybe a nibble out of a piece of bread. Pick up that piece of bread. Let's toast real fast. Is this how we make toast? He says as he touches the bread to your glass. To, uh... Finding an equilibrium within ourselves so that we can go out and dance once again. Takes a big bite. All right. Uh, I'm pretty sure Peach's candy should be wearing off maybe 20 minutes, but I really should try and get back to studying. Uh, if anyone asks, that's where I am. Um, just, uh, I'll be up there for the rest of the night, probably. Yeah, you'll figure it out. Whatever it is, you always do. Yeah, well, 
In the meantime, if you need anything, you know where to find me, yeah? I do. Hopefully I don't get lost again. Well, if you do, Pete will remind us uh, to come and find you, and we will. And uh, Esmond just kind of knocks on the table for heading upstairs. Um, yeah, I think it's outside in that time before people are returning to the tavern. Um, people are still dancing, but it's sort of that stage of dancing where it's winding down a bit about only about half the people are dancing. Some people are kind of resting. Um, I think there's a point where Araya, you've sort of snuck off to the side and you see Fane finally like seems to escape his, his brothers who keep pulling him into the dancing. Um, sneaks off kind of the side um, and uh, makes her, uh, sits on the bench next to you. Oof. They're incorrigible. It's the, it's the, they never stop. Are, uh, devo- are, are they're not fully devoted to Brynhilda then, right? They, they, what do they do? Oh, my brothers. No, they are not them. Um, they were never as faithful as um, they did not find the path as easily as me. But uh, now they are good. They are. Yeah, they are good. Um, they were stone workers. The both, like, uh, like a pa. Explains why they have so much energy. Mm. They are always the more uh, outgoing. Yeah, it, yeah. I think uh, this is good for them. It's, it's good for our friends too. Just a little bit of something before back into the fray, right? Yeah. My celebration is good for. Um, I, I've never been the type to get swept away as much, but um, it makes people happy. I think I was literally swept onto the dance floor. Yeah. I know. Um, you still on? Well, not to think, take no for an answer. Well, I think that's that's one way to make to make her happy. Yeah. Uh, is she um looks around? Just uh, she put the gift in my bag. Oh, that's right. She put one in my hood. I don't know. I never never know when to open it. <laughs> Should she be watching? I think so. It's embarrassing why that this is even a festival at all. Uh, <laughs> what? What do you mean? No, nothing, actually. Never mind. <laughs> what are you even talking about? That's good. Um, let's see. Um, meanwhile, I'm uh, probably in the dance circle. Um, I assume is Kabeth is a character that would keep dancing yes absolutely yeah. okay yeah there's some point where Somsel gets kind of spun out from the crowd kind of into you um she links arms links arms with you she's she's obviously much shorter than you um but um she's spinning around with you she's she's a uh, uh, gleaming eyed and she says man this is the best this is my favorite time in the whole year i have never I, we didn't have we didn't have this kind of festival Kibeth is just nods and is still moving to the beat of the music, and she's like, "You don't have dancing festivals." Well, no, there's dancing, but like, the, um, it's it's different. So, I mean, this 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 one with all the all the gifts, and you gotta you gotta sneak them. That's so fun. Oh, yes. Well, this one's a little new to us, too. Yeah. Yeah, it's so cool. Real perception. Oh, 20, yeah. You notice, definitely. You see Samsel as you're dancing. She's just trying to sneak something into your pocket. 
they are ample pockets right on her hips, so I feel like it's not that hard, but it's also, also like not out of her perception enough to not necessarily not notice it. And she kind of grins. Um and let, let me think. Um she'll pull Samsul aside and she'll uh say, Yeah, I I really think that this is a great holiday. Hug gently on Samsul's hair and then start to run away and uh hooked into Samsul's hair is like a thin chain link bracelet. Uh, uh roll your roll your side of hand. If you're trying to hide it. She's not hide trying that hard to hide, <laughs> to be honest. Like Kibet's like, this part is fun, but she's not good at it naturally. So it's she's sure. not like <laughs> It's not subtle, generally. Yeah. Yeah, you hear she kind of uh, gasps and giggles as you're running off, and she can tell she's thrilled. Kibet throws herself back into the dancing. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, I, I feel like Peach is a character who would keep dancing for a while, right? Absolutely. Peach is gonna dance until Sal comes out and then or until it all uh, until it all dissolves okay. yeah, she's not that... looking to go back into the tavern anytime soon okay. she got all her presents out I think yeah there's a moment where um, Ishtalan and Peach the two of you get kind of spun into each other uh, Ishtalan has taken oh, a long time ago oh okay, okay. So out there. she was trying to go upstairs to find Esmond's room while he was out um oh yes and he saw you if i remember correct i i would you you had us roll but i i would say that uh despite uh <laughs> despite esmond's attitude he would be enjoying staring out at the crowd of dancing people uh watching enjoying people enjoying themselves uh so i don't i don't know if you like I, I could say that she snuck by, or I could roll disadvantage, whatever you want. Did she roll a one? I rolled uh, a three. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna, yeah, sure. Well, it's up to you, though. That's what if you notice not, I'll let you call that one. Um, I, no, I'm, 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 I, I want, I want Ishtan to have this. She deserves one. <laughs> I mean, if you want to roll disadvantage and see if that gives anything, uh, sure, I'll roll. It is also very funny if she just strikes out the entire time. So, I'll roll disadvantage. Why not? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, you just can't help but notice such. <laughs> you just it's just like ding, 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 up, the, up the stairs. Oh no, my my eighteenth a, a little bit. I mean. My die, my die was a three. The final result was an eighteen. Oh, okay. Sorry, I thought you got a total of three. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So you, you, you sneak up there unnoticed, in fact. Um, uh, she moves along and you know tries various doors. I think she probably would have a fair idea of where people are. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. So she's going to try Esmond's door. See if they still have small town vibes where they don't lock anything ever or not. He was really thirsty. Maybe he was in a hurry. Does he lock his door? Nah. In 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 the tavern of Alangas Pass. Nah. I think it, he locked it. He did take his shit with him, but he didn't lock the door. Okay. Uh, so she opens it and sneaks inside. Finds the desk that he's been working at, which is pretty easy to spot and pulls out a package from her jacket, lays it out uh, down on top of the desk, on top of all the notes. And uh, as she does so, the chocolate that Peach shoved up her sleeve clatters out onto the desk. And she looks and says, oh, wait, what? What did she? <sighs> and then uh, opens up the box, pops it into her mouth. Ooh, you eat it. Uh, the flavor of your chocolate is 
dark chocolate with a deep sea salt caramel. It's been toasted over time to the point where it has almost a rich almondy under under flavor, right? And it's it's got a deep complexity to it. Uh, but the bitterness is what stays with you. The salt that lingers on your tongue after you've eaten it, after it's long been swallowed, you still have that note. It almost feels like you've been crying, but in a satisfying way, in a cathartic way. The salt is satisfying to you. She is chewing it, and uh, for a moment just kind of sags with the feeling that it induces. Sits down at the desk and uh, leans her head on her hands. And says, all right, I think I really needed a drink after that. I'm just going to make her way back out. Although, she makes another stop along the corridor, which she is not sure which one of these rooms might be Salander's, because she feels like he maybe didn't exist for a little bit here, so she doesn't know if he has a room. She's just gonna try every door. Yeah, <laughs> you, you open up a door. And there's like a couple that gasps. <laughs> oh, right. shit. Uh, but you eventually do find Solid Church. Is that comfortable? And then she closes the door. <laughs> Damn, you don't even wait for a response. I just yes, come so, <laughs> just come to so confusion and distress, and then I run away. Uh, so, having found a place that looks like it might be Salinger's, based on, I don't know, maybe the weaponry or. Uh, Possibly this person's a bit since he doesn't actually have anything right now. She takes out the final package she has and lays it on his bed, which also jingles slightly. And then she exits stage left. Yeah. You uh, recognized his room, by the way, just canonically because of its meticulous organization, despite its sparseness. All the dust was arranged just so. <laughs> the the desk and the chair and the table and this bedspread perfect 90 degree angle folded color coded say so it's before esmond has gone to return to his room um when everyone's coming back to the tables it's so it's just esmond and salinger at the table but as all of you come back to the table um there seem to be gifts in each of your chairs Including Esmond's chair? Probably not. Well, no, I mean, no, because you're in it. So that's something suddenly just appears between his legs. She sets uh, her Ishalan present down next to the new present and uh, uh, opens Ishalan's first since she received it first. It jingles like, but she shakes it first. Oh. So it feels it feels like there's multiple items in this packet. Mm -hmm. There's one that's a little bit it's light but solid, and it smells nice. And then on the other, the jingly side is heavier. Oh, uh, well, I mean, still pretty light. And so when you open it, you find a an ornament that looks like it's a tiny little cuff that uh, can be tightened, and then has like a little string of bells that looks like it is maybe supposed to be um, attached to the end of a tail. It even has like a little, uh, like a sort of silver cage looking thing that's meant to close around the tip of it. And, and it's belled. <laughs> and it's, she's sort of like, her, her eyes get like super shiny and sparkle up like, is this, is this so you can keep track of me? Uh, and the, <laughs> she just works and says, uh, I've seen uh, the some of the havoc that the tail causes. I think I do not wish it to happen to me. And then the other package is a little packet of very, very mildly scented soaps um, and lotions, like bath products. <laughs> How did you know? I felt very bad for you when you were in the temple and you were trying to take a bath with nothing but just water. 
Well, okay, so it was mostly just taking advantage of the opportunity, and we hadn't really had anything since we'd been out in nature for quite some time, and absolutely no magic as we were trying to traverse. No, I mean, uh, thank you. No, this is great. What's in the other mysterious present? It was a neatly folded piece of paper that was sealed with wax. Crisply opens the wax. And there is a piece of iridescent blue fabric that seems to shift in the light. And as you pull it out of the envelope, you realize it's very thin and much larger than it appears. Could work as a scarf, could work as any other type of drapery. And it shifts and changes in various shades of blue as you move it. I know just how to wear this. If she notices um, Salinger like watching her over, like d d she's gonna like take stock of everyone at the table who she definitely knows she received. Realizes mm, probably not as. Thank you, Salinger. Deduction. I have no idea what you're talking about know about the envelopes and everyone else's chair. <laughs> she's will not affect an order. She's going to open hers as well. Similar um, piece of cloth, but heavier. Um, it's got an elasticity to it, and it shifts between shades of copper, brown, and green, not moving with light, but moving as it stretches and changes shape. So when you fold it, the colors change and shift around. She wraps it around her neck, uh, just, you know, like a very casual drape. Very, what's the word? Uh, yeah, ninja style. Uh, Kabath is. Ooh. Beth is still outside dancing, uh, and she'll, if Fane is still out there, she'll uh, go up and invite him to dance. Oh. Okay. Just one round. Uh, and when he grabs her hand, uh, he will find in her hand a another, like, bracelet um, that she'll let go of, so he grabs it, and it oh. is the same as Araya's, but inversed. Uh, in pattern color. Oh, his eyes go wide. <laughs> it's sneaky. <laughs> I do my best. Uh, and then she'll actually invite him for, for one round of dancing. Yeah, yeah, uh, he looks at it for a, a, a while and he puts it on. Then he takes a deep breath. Okay. <laughs> and goes to dance. And then after that, she'll, she'll join her friends back at the table. I do think having come down and unwrapped the gifts, etc., uh, and realizing that the boys have not gone out to dance yet, she would have tried to bully them to, into dancing. That's, uh, nope, nope. Esmond gave a cool toast and he would have been upstairs by now. <laughs> I'm, I'm to, nope. No, 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 uh, she may need Try and like, well, if, he's, if they cross paths while they're uh, moving, she's just gonna like snag him by the elbow and try to just drag him back downstairs, backward. Oh, no, thank you. I don't want this, please. Have you even celebrated yet? I mean, you came down, you sat at the table like a lump. You ate I a had, little bit. I had a glass of wine and I had some food. Yes, I have done my mandatory celebrating for the evening. Celebration is not done until some joy has been had, citizen. Tough. She's. I think she would basically hassle him some more about it, but she's not actually going to try and drag him out the door. So she wants to move to hassle Sandra. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Uh, Esmond would have entertained your hassling him for a little bit of time, but he would, he would eventually uh, uh, fight past you to return to his room. But it sounds like Ishalan is trying to uh, 
trying to get Salander? She's gonna try and, yeah, she's going to try and get Salander out. She's like, what are you, what are you doing sitting here? Peach is out there. Well. Yeah, but... This is your town. This, this is your festival that uh, you, in some way or other, the created an honor of everyone here, apparently. Are you not going to enjoy it? Enjoy the fruits of the second... some some What's labor this... of yours. Maybe it's not you specifically. You're the second person that called this my town. It's not... Mine? Oh. Yeah. What else would you call Whoever it? Picked it's, out... named... it's named after you. It's spelled wrong. He eats the macaroon and steps outside towards the dancing. Oh, you eat the macaroon? In one big bite, out of slight frustration. Alright, let me find my notes here. Because Ishlan was right. <laughs> Alright, uh, the macaroon is light and airy with a slight floral scent, but the flavor itself is so gentle that it dissolves in your mouth and you're left with the ephemeral smell of peach's shampoo and the feeling you had after she kissed you i've been waiting for an opportunity to have a giant character swoon for a second and we're just going to have that. So he's like loses footing and you don't realize why on this way. Or... So let's all attempt to catch him. <laughs> I don't know how successful she will be. She's not that strong. I love it, but I also love the idea that this gifts accidentally get switched to something else. It gets so just... That would have been hilarious. Salinger's like, oh, this feels familiar. Salinger's like, why does this taste like my dead sister? <laughs> this tastes like regret this... and acceptance. Why? why would that be a gift? <laughs> <laughs> um... So is Peach still out there dancing when Salinger comes out? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Peach, Peach is out there dancing. So yeah. So prob about. probably by that point in the day, like a lot, like the people are still dancing, but it's not as big as a crowd. It's like a smaller, the smaller, it's f the fewer people, but the people who really like to dance, um, who've clearly been at it for a while. It's like that point in a late in a wedding, right? People's people have loosened their collars and um yeah and peach so you see salinger emerge from the tavern easy to spot a fur bog and she'll raise her hand and and wave to him but she's been giving him space she's been around since he's been around but she hasn't been hovering more than watching over him while he's been sleeping. It's, yeah, she's trying to be cool. So, but she'll she'll wave. She'll like, hey, Sal. He starts walking towards you, um, waves back a little. You have known him long enough that you can tell he's. Um, like unconfident in his walk, like unsteady on his own feet as he's heading um, through the thin crowd um, towards you. Okay. Almost like he's looking down at his feet, like someone might look at their fingers and they're remembering how to play an instrument. But eventually makes his way to you. Straightens up, looks confident like himself again, holds out a hand and says, I think, oh, you would dance. Oh. Yeah, if you're... If you're feeling steady on your feet. Just make it look like I'm leading. Of course. She'll take his hand and uh, put her hand around his hip. You know. Like you do. 
Uh, she will let him lead, but uh, if he's guiding them anywhere, uh, anywhere where they might bump, um, she will gently redirect. She's not going to let them fall over. Well, all out of bed is um, almost, almost the last two people left. Not, not the only two, but almost the last two people um, at the dancing circle after a while. Salinger and Peach, and maybe sometime later, everyone has, uh, with a much more relaxed vibe, have come back into the, back into the tavern. And Thane is in there, um, <laughs> along with uh, Samsel. I think Ishalan's actually probably not there. Okay. Kabeth, all slow. Maybe Kabeth will depart pretty early, but Kabeth will head up to talk to Hez at some point. Okay, sounds good. It might make sense to have that happen before this. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, um, Esmond, you're already... Wait, is Esmond here? Is he AFK? Possibly. We can do the same when he gets back. Yeah, he's still AFK. Um, okay, yeah, so... For anyone who would not have intentionally not been there... Um, yeah, people are back together at that, that main table. She's, uh, draped the new piece of cloth over her, uh, scarfy veil. It, it just looks it's like, oh, over the horns, but it's like, because it's transparent, it'll look quite nice. Bracelet. Jingle bell, the jingle bell goes on her tail, and you can hear her tail every now and then, just like... You get to decide how annoying that's going to be for you, because she's not going to not wear it. If anything, it's a security measure to keep all of our stuff safe. Honestly, <laughs> this is the only way to thwart the tail, but just letting you know. Tail does is a magical curse, tail, so. Um, at some I do point, like that it's cat belled. Yeah. And at some point, Fane is. Kind of pulled his pack around. And he was, no, oh, um, found a gift in my bag. How did this get here? <laughs> he pulls out a Shalon's gift. Uh, as he opens it up, it looks like a little pouch that's full of um, a very sharp smelling red dust. And there's a note inside that says, Spice for either cooking with or to keep you warm on these snowy days or uh, sometimes it's good to have some pocket pepper to throw in people's eyes yeah. so he takes it and <laughs> he, 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 <laughs> his eyes go wide it's basically yeah, yeah like chili or uh, cayenne pepper right right <laughs> he rubs his nose furiously it's his uh Oh, yeah, that's somebody useful. And uh, he seals it up. Tucks it up. Tucks it away. Um, yeah, so but, yeah, before too long, you guys are all kind of there together at the table. It's much, much, uh, pretty much evening, evening time, though the sun is still out. So it's, it tends to be. Um, Samsel, um, she's kind of grazing on the remains of food on the table. So, um, uh, yeah, so what's, um, what's next? Like, um, I know we can't stay here for, for uh, too long. Where are we going? I, I think we're going to get kitted out a little bit here for a, a day or so, and then we might be headed back to Shep's just to, uh, we got to tie up some ends there and, and check on some folk, you know, now, now that we come back to Alangi and met up with, you know, Fane's folks and seen that everybody's okay here. I think a lot of us want to go back and, uh, you know, especially a follow up with what all happened, uh, with, uh, Araya's people, you know, the, the other sisters from the temple. 
Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, when, when I left, when I left um, Shepherd's Son, everything seemed everything seemed good there. Um, but uh, yeah, you'll want to see it for yourselves. Yeah, I think it'll be good for us all to be back at home base for a, a moment or two, and especially with the change in seasons and everything, check in with all of our families and you know who, who all is still there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, the only thing I really got the sense of was like, um, there's not as much food coming from the fields that are around, um, around Shepherd's End, but there's there's more coming from the um, they call it the temple. I got I mean, same temple you're probably talking about, right? Yeah, yeah, they they do sweet potatoes and winter wheat up there. Yeah, um, yeah, everyone, everything seemed seemed good. Um, yeah, yeah, that'll be, um, yeah, um, hope you don't mind me coming with you. No, of course, it's wonderful to have you along, Sam. So you're great, hmm. and you can help us when we go on all our travels. You've gone further ranging than any of us all have. Oh. We've gone, what, two two towns from home? You've been all up and down the continent? Mm, well, I actually did a lot more traveling back, back home. I, 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 didn't, we didn't ha I didn't have to do too well. Yeah. Anyway. Oh. Um, oh more pie. Peach will dilly dally until she has a chance to talk to Zalander solo, regardless of how many NPCs are hanging out. Okay. So, but yeah, she's not looking to push any other compost. Does Kabeth open her thing from her seat on her way up to see us? Yeah, she definitely would open it before she heads up. So yours is metallic. Um, it shifts between like iron and silver. It's medium weight. It's actually knitted. Um, so it's almost links together of those different colors. But the most noticeable thing about your scarf or shawl, however you want to wear it, is that it smells like fresh baked goods. Her eyes just go wide and she kind of like feels it like lets it flow as knit fabric does and she's like oh this is gonna make me even hungrier that's okay i love it and she'll she's like it goes perfect with my freshly polished armor and she wraps it around her neck <laughs> a, a handsome gift from a handsome lad thank you Definitely a torture device for Kabeth. Kabeth <laughs> uh, will head upstairs after that. Was there anyone else who haven't opened their Salinger gift from their chair? Uh, Esmond didn't have one in his chair, but he's been sitting in it, or he was sitting in his chair before heading back up to his room. So I don't, I don't know if Sal would have done anything else. He didn't have a chance, so we'll have to, like, sometime before it's no longer... What is this holiday called? Uh, Maiden's Blessing Festival. It's like a whole week, though. You don't have to do it this day. Oh. So, oh. who knows when the curse will come for you, then? Good um, the curse. I love it. Yeah, but Peach, there's also there's a, a gift in your chair. Yeah, um... Peach will wait until the table's mostly cleared up, and then as she's automatically stacking plates and piles, sort of automatically bussing the table, even though this isn't actually the Wanderlust, it feels like it's her restaurant, so... Anyway, so she's clearing tables, and uh, as she does, she uh, picks up the parcel from her seat, and she goes, Oh, is Alice this one for you? Somebody probably stuck it there. I wasn't paying much attention while I was... Yes, it's from me. 
Well, I mean, process of elimination. Um, and she will go ahead and uh, break the seal of the envelope and open it. Your piece of fabric actually tumbles out with a myriad of different textures, colors, um, patchworks all together as if it can't decide what it is whenever you turn it in the light and change and shifts based on how it moves as if the cloth itself is dancing between different types of fabric just by existing. This is incredible. I've never seen, I've never seen anything like this, Salem. Where Did you stop by the tailor? They, you, I hope you saw, I put in a special request so that you could have anything in your shoulder size and they also needed your inseam, which I'm not super sure of, but I gave them your waist. So hopefully they should be able to get some gear for you over the next couple of days. Did they tell you? Um, I vaguely remember it. That's actually just cut up pieces of the old, uh, and you realize looking at it that he had cut strips of the clothes of mending and they're trying to heal themselves back together and that's why I keep shifting. Oh. So you like cut a sleeve or something off that it looks This This is really, really unique, Sal. Uh that's very cool. And uh, well, if you sort of examine them. You never could pick just one style, so it didn't make sense for me to do anything else. It's perfect. And uh, Peach will tie it around her waist and will be kind of an overskirt. Uh, well, did you um? Did you end up... Uh, the, the treat that I give you, did you end up... Did you end up trying that? Yeah. Dead sister flavor macaroon. Real weird. Sorry. <laughs> that mess with you. Um. Yeah. Yeah, I did. It's very thoughtful. If unexpected, maybe. Oh, um, un unexpected. Um. Yeah, I. Yeah, I wanted to um to mention that. I mean. I know that you've been back for a, a little while, but um, I know when you first kind of came back, I maybe might have take you by surprise a little bit, uh, you know, especially in front of Islan and, and Esmond and, you know, that sort of environment, there's a lot of pressure for that sort of thing. And, and you know, I had had a lot of time. You've been gone for for weeks and weeks, and I thought that, I had time even to mourn you and, and, and think that you've been, so it was, I was under a lot of, so, you know, if, if you want to slow anything down or, or stop anything out altogether, I, you know, I just, I, I don't have anything else to say. Somewhere during the course of that, you look down and realize he'd put his hand on yours. Look. For you, I was gone for, what'd you say it was, 20 days? 21, yeah. 21. You barely know how to begin describing where, when, whatever I was, but it felt like a second less and it felt like forever at the same time and I'm still reeling from it I can't I can't fathom what it would be like to consider that you were dead and have to live with that for 21 days but where I was it was as if I didn't exist at all I felt like nothing, but everything at the same time. It, if Ava was here, she'd say my mind's trying to cope with an impossible situation as fabricating things to help deal with it. But there was, wherever I was or wasn't, for however long you say I was gone and somehow also established it town that is mine and named after me and it 
at the back of it, the corner of my eyes where I couldn't quite ever catch a glimpse of it was some thing, some presence that breathed everything in and out like vapors in a fog, destroying and creating again and again. Then as if I just blinked, you'd run face first into me. That was, it was a nice welcome. You don't have to feel embarrassed about it. Yeah, slow is good with my, where my headspace at, if if that's all right. Yeah, yeah, of course. I, yeah. We can, yeah, we can go at whatever tempo you want. And thanks for not okay. letting me look like a fool out there, because uh, I'm still all very wibbledy-wobbledy. Oh. oh, I don't know what you're talking about, Salinger. You move with more grace than you ever have. Uh, although I may be misremembering you. You know, I that. it wasn't just that you were dead either, Sal. I, for a while there, I was the only one who remembered you existed at all. And that... Uh, really? Yeah. I don't mean to, I'm not laughing at you, it's just... Only you would be a hopeless enough romantic to be the only person that remembered that I exist in spite of me being torn from time and space. And it's, ah, if you could describe it as that, I'd probably need else to get through the words, but that we can both admit it's a little ridiculous. You... I remembered you. Oh, not look. I remembered you. I'm dashing and good looking and all that, but like not impossibly memorable. Okay, it wasn't even that. All um, folks didn't remember you, and Kebeth was was very attentive. And I had to be like, look, I still got you know hard feelings for a man who just disappeared and everything. Okay, okay. I, I have to I have to know. Day. Hold on, I have what? to know. And you gotta tell me honest. Look me in the eye. What? What words did you use to describe me to a whole bunch of folks that couldn't remember that I existed? Um well I said exact that you words were... don't pretty it up. I can't remember the exact words that I used. That's impossible but you know it also depends who i was talking to because you know i might use different words talking to Araya than i might to say you know esmond you know having different sorts of conversations but um you know I, I talked about i talked about real things i talked about when you when you fought three three moons belief right? and how you raised that the hammer of Brunhilde in a way that it seemed like you shouldn't be able to even though you are so strong how you lifted it with your entire body and I could see your arms rippling underneath your shirt and you'd thrown your coat aside so it was just oh, I could and the way your hair was and and then and then, and then nobody else remembered it they were, they thought that there was some negotiation and in anyway i i don't forget that kind of image and so I, maybe i told the ray a little bit about it too that may have been a little objectifying in my descriptions of you to be perfectly honest all right you are very handsome and i had uh, i had more time than than you, than you did i i thought you were dead salinger i never thought you'd ever find out that i may have called you a slice of beefcake all right uh so <clears throat> you know i love flattery even if it might be to the point of ludicrous exaggeration in your case at this moment that could have let us 
be honest with one another, as we are in many ways contrast completely derived from the overindulgence you and Kabeth shared with those romance novels she lent to you that I tried to get through one of them. And, oh. I mean, it's not just about the romance novels. There's a romantic subplots in almost every form of adventure, Sal. The hero's journey. Have you ever heard of such a thing? There's the whole message to the goddess aspect. And then you got to go rescue the princess. Come on. Can't be a hero without a girl. All right. Well, I need rescue at this moment because I don't know if I can make it up those stairs on my own. You mind giving me a shoulder to lean on? And promise me something as we start walking up the stairs. I'm assuming yeah. you're cooperating with them. Yeah, yeah, of course. If I die yeah. again, slab of beefcake better not be on my tombstone. You wrote your own tombstone, Salinger. You need to see more about this town. It is the wildest time capsule of... Oh, you know what? You're coming at me. Look at this golden answer. Mm-hmm. And she'll just kind of start giving you sass about that. Yeah, there's a larger than life statue of me in the center of this town. I am some symbol of love and true hearts coming together. People are going on dates hoping that I'll bless them in their endeavors. Mm -hmm. This lore came from somewhere, Salinger. I'm not the only one telling stories. So, you know, I just have more time. When I'm you sorry. had centuries, you wrote plenty about me. I thought Kabeth was in the center of town. <laughs> well, no, she's in the center of the tavern. Okay. Just wondering. I was like, wait a second. <laughs> I can let that be the fading banter as the, the scene ends. Though, out of character moment. I can't control what people do with my stories for th how many years? 900. Which is how long I thought you were dead for. You're an historical figure. Um, as we pull back from the two of them, so, uh, bantering back and forth, left alone at the table. Um, were there any other scenes that people wanted to do that night? Okay. I have something before people fall asleep for each of you, but that's that's all. Okay, let's do it. And Esmond also requested Kabath to come see him to talk about planning. Let's do all those things. All at once, everyone go. I'm almost done drawing, just like a little tiny icon for each of your things, so give me a second. Sure. Um, Kabath and... Well, Esmond, there's not going to be. Uh, yeah, close the crystal matrix, go and answer the door, expecting another cup of Hakeem. Oh, hey, you're done. Oh, yeah. Uh, Kabeth is standing there holding a, a tray, and on it is a piece of um, slab pie that has uh, fruit in it. And she, there's one empty plate next to it with crumbs, and she goes, I um, ate mine on the way up, but I didn't eat yours yet, so I brought it for you, and there's pork if you want it. Tell you what, why don't we split it while we uh, discuss uh, blueprints and stuff real fast, yeah? Okay. Uh, Esmond uh, invites her in, closes his door. Uh, as she gets situated, he will uh, activate the crystal matrix and uh, blue holograms will light up all of the walls. And so uh, while there are sporadic pieces of paper across each of the walls and some strings connecting them, uh, while there are some pages that have notes scrawled onto them, there are blank pages that, as the crystal matrix activates, the blue holograms light up and uh, shine onto those pages. And on several pages on the uh, on on one wall specifically, are a series of very very early designs of like different um, styles of airships that could. Uh, accommodate uh, swift travel but could fit our full party uh, and Esmond just kind of walks over to the wall so these are some of the rough uh, designs that I've come up with I, I've never designed 
anything uh, to this scale necessarily. So I can come up with kind of the rough mathematics of how it should work and the aerodynamics of like what would be the best design. But I'm also trying to accommodate for how long it would take to build any of these designs because we a bunch of our time has already been eaten up. So we need something to that that would be quick enough to to put together, but also would be uh, 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 swift enough to to make. Uh, uh, travel uh faster than than a standard airship hopefully what do you what do you what do you think of any of these um she kind of studies each one closely for a moment and she says well i mean i'm capable of building many things obviously i'm best working with metal i don't know what practicality that would have for an airship specifically but it seems to me like any airship we build should have metal parts for reliability. Um, so it's got to withstand the sheer force of oh, whatever's holding it up and all the people and things that are on it. So, um, Kebeth will pick one that looks particularly aerodynamic and seems like it would work well for what we want. And she's like, I, I think this one appeals to me the most and it looks like it's feasible. I mean, it's going to take a while, no matter what. Are we... Everybody's talking about going to Shep's End, and I do desperately want to see everyone there and see how things are going, but does it make sense to build it there or build it here? I mean, we could be spending our time here and get more done while everybody's traveling or we can build it there while they're getting I mean, if we let them go without us they're going to get into trouble because, you know, Casey's not making great decisions these days not that well, he ever did <laughs> well, that's the thing uh, his decisions aren't necessarily anyone's favorite but they always seem to work out for him so, I don't know I, I, I wouldn't, I, I don't want to count him out yet, but I, I, I do, I do need to to talk to him. Yeah, um, I, it's. I don't know if this town has the right supplies that we need to build an airship. They they practice primarily in stonework. Uh, Mirwood has uh, has more material than Shepherd's Inn does, but Shepherd uh, Shepherd's Inn also does have some materials that we can use to begin uh, putting together. Uh, the, the possible ship. Um, and we have to go to Shep at, Shep's End anyway. Um, we have to go to the temple and, and see if we can help uh, the other uh, the followers of the Maiden um, from from the temple. Um, and I, 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 I feel like we could all use a, use a trip back home. As well yeah working at my home forge would be better i mean the one i borrowed the other today how long have we been back i have no idea um <laughs> the one i borrowed today was definitely good but it, it's not the same as working with your own stuff you know <sighs> um oh geez and this is all also based entirely on if we can actually get Fucking Dragonstone and Esmond will uh, uh, go and like begin swiping his hands across the wall until it reaches a page, and there are more, uh, uh, more blueprints. These ones specifically for like land vehicles um, that can travel across across snow and rocky terrain and stuff. But these, if we can, if we can't find Dragonstone because that the, the airships probably like. The, the engine is is useless to fly unless we can find Dragonstone. So if we can't, uh, we could all we could retrofit the engine to work in in a land vehicle, like something that could travel across snow more easily than than a, a standard cart could. So I've also thrown together these rough blueprints, but again, this is all kind of out of my wheelhouse. I mean, that's appealing in that you can't fall from the sky if something goes wrong. 
yeah, that's a fair point. Uh, granted, I will say that I think between almost all of us that, that we could fall from the sky relatively safely. Hmm. Fair point. Plus, it's faster, and in theory, there should be less obstacles up in the sky. Um, Chris, quick question. Did we bring the engine thing with us? I don't know. Yes? Yes. Yeah, yes. I, I, have it, I have it in my bag. And could, <laughs> what a bag. Could, uh, roll history. Let me make it so I can see what my rolls are. Hold on. I can use a thing to re-roll that if that's not good enough, but that's probably about as good as I'll get. <laughs> oh, 21. Yeah, that's great. Um, yeah, you you certainly in your time, the your voracious reading, um, read some stories that make some mention of Dragonstone. Um, there are legends about ancient mountains that used to float in the sky, and they were enchanted because the blood... Um, of a dragon had spilled onto the stone, and when it did, um, the those mountains rose into the air. And those are those are old kind of like fairy tale kind of stories and things like that. Uh, but that's okay. the main mention that you. Yeah, she'll say that. Uh, hopefully, there should be nothing up there to be in our way. She'll say that kind of jokingly, um, but she, then she pauses and she says, "I mean." We still have access to some train cars around, don't we? I mean, the railroads aren't working, but maybe we could use that to save us some time if we already have something to build off of. That would be faster? No? You see Esmond about to begin, like, going into another tirade, uh, like, pointing against the wall, and he just kind of stops In turn to you. Say that one more time. Train car. And and if if we're not in the sky and we're on the ground and we find train tracks and we find some way to land it on the train tracks, then we could have an airship that's also a train. An air train. <laughs> you, you, see, you see Esmond, like, contemplating, trying to come up with a counter-argument to you at the ridiculous idea of an air train. And he's just kind of... <laughs> uh... No. I mean, if we can find dragons... Jam, could could the could the could the uh what is it called? The peril drive core be retrofitted into a train car uh and be made to um to fly a, a train potentially. Contemplate the idea. You realize I mean it would take some modification, but yeah, I guess you could do that. I am chaotic good. You're welcome. It's just, well, no, no, that can't, but I, I no, but I, Kabeth has half of a slice of half, like she's like cut the pie slab in half and she's just like holding it halfway in her mouth, like waiting for you to say something. It's, Um, Kibef? Uh huh. Uh, you're. I think. I, hey, hey. Uh, you know what? You're you're a fucking genius, actually. <laughs> I am. Y yeah, yeah. Um. Holy shit! Yeah, that's. That would save us a, a bunch of time of having to design and <laughs> build a, a a ship. Um. Certainly, uh, ridiculous sounding on paper, but it would take us, it would only take us a bit of time to, to retrofit the, 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 the peril drive core into 
a train car, and if we were able to find Dragonstone, then we... I, I have a thought about that, too. The Dragonstone. So, you, it's, it's, I assume it's a stone underground somewhere that you have to find in mine. I think you and I are might be on the same page, actually, already. <laughs> uh-huh, and we're in a town full of dwarves who are stone experts and mine things. I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe slightly on different pages, uh, but okay. continue real fast. Well, I mean, I was thinking that maybe we could, you know, as the, the amazing heroes of this town ask for help finding this, uh, uh, this special, I mean, is it, is it going to be dangerous to mine? Is it going to explode on them? Because I don't want to put, don't want to put them in unnecessary uh, no, extra I, I actually have a theory as to where we can actually find some dragon stone and that's going to be the uh, the the dangerous part oh well I mean again it would be maybe helpful to have people who are mining experts I mean I could also send Casey and apparently he's you know, good underground too <sighs> this is it's fine as you guys are kind of in the midst of this conversation, as you're going through all the notes, um, you can definitely use one of the train cars from Mirwood as a base, but you're going to have to make some modifications. And looking as you guys maybe brainstorm a little bit, the best materials that will be available to you that you know you'll, that you'll need, um, and that she also knows that you know that exist. Um, there's salt wood from the forests north east of Shepherd's End. There is dark silver from the old tunnels behind the Temple of the Maiden Thrice. Um, there is, you will need a source of orichalcum, which used to be mineable from the old mines northwest of Shepherd's End, but as far as you know, those mines ran dry. Um, so you're not really sure where orichalcum will come from. Um, Can we sell it use... from, like, like if we've had a piece of armor or something with it, I don't know if we currently do. But. Uh, you don't. You don't currently, but yeah, you could. You could. Yeah, you, if you find if you find some source of it, I, I should say you can also try with lesser materials. It's just this is what would be optimal. Um, okay. But you definitely, uncompromisingly, will need dragonstone, and you definitely have, do not have it. Uh, okay. This might be this 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 is potentially the most productive uh, design meeting I've ever had. I think. Um, you, I, we still have to uh, source several uh, materials to uh, to modify a, a train car, but mm -hmm. I think we could make this work. I mean, t you and I together, we could we could build build it. We can do. I, we definitely can do this. And I, th I think and, we're going to need more help than just this, just the two of us. But so oh, I, yeah. at, at least, yeah, you, uh, I, you're you're one of the best back blacksmiths that I know. Um, and I, I feel like that you could carry this out on your own entirely, honestly, just with the the right uh, modifications. Oh. So, then. The question I have now is, what what's gonna what what are you worried about in with the if you know where Dragonstone is what what makes it dangerous to find? It's not necessarily a guarantee that we will find it, and that could put us in in danger. But it's also. <sighs> I I think I now have a solid plan as to what I think our next move should be. And I think I think the next stage will be to bring it up to everyone tomorrow after everyone's had a time to uh, sleep and, and sober up after today's festivities and uh, get everyone's opinion on on what the next step will be. Okay. Well, I trust you, and whatever you think is best, I probably and usually agree with you. So, you just tell me what you need, and I'll help make it happen. I think for now, 
we all just need to try and get some sleep. I, I, I will try. I will try and get some get some sleep. Um. Mm -hmm. And she, she reaches to her side and she takes the plate and she kind of nudges it toward him. But can we celebrate with some pie first? Uh, yeah. <sighs> yeah, okay. Um, before that, uh, and Esmond will kind of dash forward and kind of wrap his arms around you. Uh, just be like, and just kind of uh, say into your chest, you're a genius. Uh, hold you, I mean, as tight as he can. Uh, for a moment before letting you go. Kabeth is like, like stiff with shock at first, and then she realizes what's happening, and she wraps her arms back around him, and she's like, well, coming from you, and that's, that's very high flattery. Thank you. And as, as you pull away, her face is like bright red, and she's grinning. <laughs> to, uh, uh, and Esmond will take a piece of uh, food because there are no drinks in here uh, and just kind of hold it up to you uh, to uh, terrible uh, terrible plans and flying train cars she kind of like gently cheers the pie <laughs> with him and then eats it and will fade out <laughs> uh, I have a little vignette and also did Desmond open the package on its desk Yes, I thank you for reminding me. I was just remembering that. Uh, when Esmond returned to his room, he would have seen whatever was left by Ishlan, and he would have opened that before any scenes with uh, with Kibeth. As you open it, you find a little notebook. It looks like it's leather bound on the outside, and then as with a pencil stuck into a little loop on the binder on the spine. And you open it, the pages feel waxed almost. Um, they're very slick. And there's a note written on the inside cover that says, this journal should be waterproof. And I believe this pencil, if this sort of keep is trustworthy, is supposed to be able to write on any surface. So, hope this helps. And hey, Ismond, there might be many like you, but you are theirs. And uh, you can see that there's, under theirs, so there was like a written, some, something else was written and then it was erased. Uh, and if you hold it up to the light, it looks like it said ours originally. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> uh... You know, no one's in the room. No one knows what would have happened after he read that. Also, but uh, tell us the audience, Esmond. Oh, come on, please. The audience and your friends. Ah, oh, man, reading that. Uh, I mean, yeah, Esmond would 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 tear up slightly, and and. Uh, Wipe away, wipe his eyes before anything fell onto the actual journal because this is a nice fucking journal. It's waterproof. I don't want to test it. But then, yeah, he will test it. He'll smudge and see what I, and nothing. Oh no, it's clean. Oh, that's that's actually really fucking nice shit. And then. I think while during the conversation that had happened down below in the tavern main room, uh, when everyone else is there and Ishlan was absent, instead while there's some of the sound of celebration and chatter, more subdued now at this hour, but still ongoing, Ishlan is sitting on the roof of the inn, wrapped up in her cloak. Uh, amidst the snow that is still probably there, uh, sobbing silently into her knees. Uh, 
That's it for me. Thanks, Peach, for the feelings. At whatever point in the evening, whether the sun's still out or it's dark, at some point as each of you are settling into sleep, you each find something somehow under your pillow. Yeah. Packed under your pillow is kind of a... Well, it's a book. It looks like a book you would have packed on, like, if you were going on an adventure, you know, to Merwood and whatnot. And, well, but this one, the second look, this title is not one you're familiar with. This is not from your home library. It's rather new. So would, which, Wait. which person? Come back. Come back. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll think of like a title for it. I just did a scribble. But um, yeah, it's a very nice like gilt edged book with like little like metal bits on the edge. I'll show you a picture. And then Ishalon. You sort of like hug your pillow and as you tuck one hand under you come across something a very buttery smooth type of leather. And it's an archery glove, and definitely something you would have put in your backpack. Uh, it should have been in your backpack the whole time, but I mean, when's the last time you shot an arrow? But if you pull it out and take a closer look, the shimmer of the leather is not familiar at all. Like it's been uh, oiled with a rainbow. Esmond, if you ever do fall asleep, or maybe you just lean against your pillow as you're like reading another book, you feel something hard underneath the pillow, and inside is kind of this weird origami glasses pencil case combination. You sort of like squeeze it, it opens, squeeze it open. This looks a lot like something you had way back when you were a kid in school. Um, it's not nearly as cool. Like you, you're like, I definitely had a pencil holder like this. But not really. It's familiar, but it'll definitely keep at least your glasses safe from uh, prying eyes. Pocket protector, yes! Nerd <laughs> present. Uh, Peach, you find just underneath cozy pillow, underneath cozy blankets, you find a pair of the thickest socks that tie with a beautiful ribbon just above the knee. This is something that if you were shopping for winter clothes, it would definitely have caught your eye. And maybe you should have had a pair like this back at home. Oh, but no, but these are, these have small hearts just above the knee. This is definitely new. Salander. You find a very simple tie pin in a, in a style that you kind of remember from the book that Kabeth had given you about tying cravats and whatnot. And you're like, oh, this, it's kind of nostalgic almost, like familiar, just on the edge of your memory. But you're certain you've never owned one of this style exactly. And Fane didn't expect it, necessarily. But somehow, at his family home, in the bed, where he still hears his brothers up at night, there's a small cloak clasp with an etching of Brunhilde's hammer, and it looks like something you'd find in a temple of Brunhilde. But definitely newer, not a stolen reliquary, I promise you. And I, and I did a tiny sketch. I was gonna say, Salinger probably has a lot of packages in his bed tonight. Because <laughs> the other one that Ishtalon had left <laughs> ends up being a almost very fluid, supple piece of chain mail. Uh, or it looks like chain mail, but it's very decorative. And actually, it looks pretty much exactly like all the other pieces that she has sneaked into the bags of everyone else before. Um, but Salinger's is like a beautiful royal sort of purple um, with reddish tones, overtones, depending on how the light strikes it. And it is also, instead of just like a shirt, like a Merle Scott, it is clear, she clearly looked at it and was like, this is never going to fit him in any way. And so instead, she adapted it into a loincloth. <laughs>
Any other scenes before the characters turn into sleep? Uh, yeah, I'll do a little vignette of Kabath. Um, Kabath leaves Esmond with the promise that he is actually going to sleep. She's like, "You promise? You're, you're gonna you're gonna sleep?" Oh yeah, sure, totally. She narrows her eyes. Eventually. For a long, you're gonna get adequate sleep. Uh huh. Mm hmm. She kind of like backs out the door, and she's like, "We'll see." <laughs> uh, and she she takes the plates with her, and uh, as she walks down the hall, um, I I imagine there's like somewhere you can leave like room service stuff to be gathered by the kitchen without having to go all the way down. Uh, she'll deposit her things there and she'll wander off towards her room and she just kind of chuckles herself cut that genius she chuckles and goes off to bed each of you settle into rest a cozy night's sleep tavern guys pass the next morning, the sun's already risen. The meals from the night before have been cleaned, and there's a fresher breakfast on the tables in the main body of the tavern. But as you move past the statue of the Golden Dancer, out through the doors, there are footprints that lead through the snow. Large footprints. They seem to settle and pause for a moment at a series of hand-high tiny carvings made of ice and snow that depict each of you, and each is carved with the protection symbol of Brynhilde. It's just sitting on the edge of one of the... Uh, uh, Guarded troughs outside. Someone must have done that early in the morning. The footprints continue on deeper through the town, past the chamber of shadows and stories, to the very eastern edge of the town. And there, the last thing we'll see tonight is Salinger. Standing before two statues that have stood now for almost a thousand years. One of them is of Imov, the other is of Charlie. And soldiers, you stand there staring at them and realize somebody made these. Isn't you? And that's where we'll stop for tonight. Ooh, intrigue. I know. This is toxic. That's, this that's is such unsettling. A session. This is such a good session to return to after being away for a while. Thank you. Yeah, it's a good. It's a good chapter mm. recap. Everything. Yeah. I know. I really. Honestly, I appreciated the summary at the very beginning, too. Like, okay, where are we at in terms of, like, our characters have been at this tower for a million years, but it's only been a day. It's great. We were at that Good tower time. for two and a half days at most, and we yes. lost two weeks of time. Your machine oh does tiny whiny stuff. We brought it back to, like, three days, wasn't it? Yeah, three days. Yeah, I mean, y'all were studying a lot. You were. You threw up more than two times. No, I only threw up the, the mm -hmm. one. No, the two times. No, it was just the two times. There were two snow ones and one other one. There were two snow ones and one other one. There was one in the yes. hallway. Yes. I was the one to vomit. I'm pretty sure I know how many times um, I've uh, done it. I no, I corroborate. I <laughs> hair out of the way. So it was two snow and one hallway. Come on. Three days. I get away from me, bitch. I'm <laughs> fine. Stop it. Esmond, I want to know who else is on the list of people who have poisoned you. 
literally everyone except for Kibeth and Salinger. Does... Have I, what do you mean, poisoned you? Does the quiche of leadership count as poison? No, because it didn't do anything. And it's not its not poison yeah. strictly. It's anyone that would have done a prank. And Aurea, don't you think for... Oh, don't pranks? You, that's different. You said yeah. poison! I prank irregularly. Like, no, it uh, is... It is it is it an is... ongoing list of all of all tricks that anyone would have pulled against uh, Esmond, oh and I think, I, in my mind, uh, the it, first name it, is Araya doing some. It wasn't no, poison. The first, the first name would be. It was Casey, <laughs> Casey, the, the 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 first the first ten names are Casey for.